and here we are. We are back. Um, new badges, new year. Um, I'm Dave, your Game Morrison host for this campaign. Hopefully we have sound um, to everybody, to my players here, to you, uh, the viewer, whether you're at home, work, I don't know where you might be. Um, Happy New Year. This is our first video of 2022. So uh, raise a glass to you. I'm going to have one because the nerves are kicking in. Hold on. Happy New Year. Mm. Happy New Year. Uh, there we go. Right. Okay. Uh, we're back. This is really kind of cool. Look, we're, we're back. We've got a new team of badgers here, everybody. So this, if you didn't already know, um, shall I do it again? Hello. Welcome to Band of Badgers. <laughs> I'm Dave, your Game Master and host for this campaign. Now, this is our brand new campaign. This is Scarlet Sister. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, Ramshun, there you go. It's just turned up. <laughs> uh, this <laughs> is our Scarlet Citadel series. This is supported by our friends over at Cobalt Press. So please go and check them out. You can find them at uh, cobaltpress.com. Now, as you can see, we have a whole new band of badges here. Uh, we've got new scenery. We've got new players. Uh, it's Everything kind of here has changed a little. So uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on. We've got more campaigns coming. I think almost one every week. Um, and these heroes here have been bra are brave enough um, to accept yeah. this challenge. Uh, yeah. you see here, Baron Snowhand, <clears throat> thank you. It just says you subbed. Thank you very much. Um, so <laughs> these, these uh, I'm not volunteers. Uh, these heroes are brave enough to accept this challenge. We are going to go on to literally the Scarlet Citadel. Fantastic book. It is called the Dungeon of Secrets for a reason. Okay, so make sure you, um, you stay tuned for this. You're going to love it. I'm going to love it. I'm going to love doing this. Um, now, each week... I... Go on, Josh. Go on. You can shout out. No, I just said it is, you're, you're, you're loving this too much. It's like oh, I'm, yeah. Getting, yeah. I'm getting I'm getting worried like what we're, we're going to <laughs> There's <laughs> definitely some already. stuff in there. <laughs> yeah. When Dave so, gets giddy like this where he's like, ah, the traps, and the, it's like, yeah, just watch out. They say either secrets or zombies or twists, plot twists. Yeah. Or, or, or both or everything. It's, yeah. it's the way it works. But so it, <laughs> basically, if you haven't seen Band of Badger before, we do various campaigns. All different publishers and um, all of our players and guests are now from all around the world and we'll, we'll kind of introduce who they are and from what, what countries they're from as well uh, we're based in the uk so hello uk um, now each week we're going to be joined by a special guest player and they will sit below us in the middle kind of nestled between all the badgers so we're going to keep them warm it's cold here in the uk it's winter um, now, you may recognize them, you may not. They might be people from the TTRPG arena that you've seen on YouTube or on social thingies, and it could even be you. Now, all you have to do, if you want to come and play, is to get in touch. You just have to like make that first step, get in touch, let us know who you are, that you want to come and play, and we'll set something up. Um, now, we're going to quickly go around the table here just to kind of introduce everyone. Um, we'll say quickly who they are, uh, what they do, what country they're from, and who they're going to be playing in this campaign. And once we've gone around our little virtual table here, we're going to start playing. That's it. It's it's that simple. Um, hopefully you enjoy this. We, we're not kind of rules lawyers of any kind. You may find us talking about Boba Fett because we like to talk about TV and films quite a lot. And we've got a few other things and surprises on the way as well. So that's it. I'm going to hand over now. Let's pick on, let's pick on the usual person. Here, Steve. Let's pick on you. Um, uh, haven't you got a video to roll? No. <laughs> <laughs> it was a new year. I was going to, I was going to not, you know, harass you straight away. Okay. Um, you just going to let, let it warm up for a month or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, I, I'm Steve. Uh, I'm Dave's partner in crime when it comes to banner badges. And uh, tonight I'll be playing the Dwarf Pladin, Oregon Flamebeard. Um, looking forward to starting a new campaign, really. It's been a while since we've um, we've run a campaign. We've been doing epic encounters, been doing the painting. But since we finished the Pathfinders long term, I've uh, been itching to get back into a campaign. So we're looking forward to tonight. Yeah. And, not, and don't be worried, this is not a 10-month campaign. When we're, we will be doing one of those again. Maybe 2023, 2024, who knows? But uh, right now we're kind of easing in to something very nice and, and manageable. Now, one of our new faces, uh, which way am I pointing? I'm pointing, oh, I'm pointing that way. There we go. 
is Randy. How you doing, Randy? Doing very well. <laughs> good, hey, good. Uh, yeah. Uh, just, just sort of do the intro. Cool. Uh, my name is Randy Alvarenga. I am a TTRPG streamer. Uh, I met Dave from Harbingers over on the Gone Rogue channel, which is making caves uh, a program that I'm a part of. Uh, I do a couple of other streams here and there all over, but uh, I'm located here in the U.S. And I'm super pumped to be here because <laughs> I'm excited for Secrets. And I was told that the one of the creators apologized for what we're about to get into. And I'm super <laughs> excited to find out what that means. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, yeah, basically. Um, yeah, this is kind of like, it is a dungeon crawl. This is, you know, everyone here who's listening... You know, we, we're quite aware of Dungeons and Dragons. We're aware of the Mad Mage. This is taking that kind of dungeon quest. And there's some really good twists uh, in story and gameplay and puzzles. And it's uh, it needs to be played. If you haven't already got it, do check it out. There are various other streams. We're not the first. We won't be the last. Um, so do go and check them out. But it is a great game for around the table in person or virtually like this. Let's go over to uh, all the way to all the way to tomorrow, all the way to Australia in tomorrow. That's Clint. How are you doing, Clint? Hey guys, um, I'm Clint. I'm the community manager for Ardent Roleplay. Um, you may know us. We have an an app in iOS and Android. Uh, we create augmented reality assets for tabletop role playing games. Today, I'm playing Gerlin Star Killer, and I uh, am looking forward to this dungeon crawl because it's something that I haven't had the opportunity to do for a very, very long time. It is nice, and it's something that we can just kind of relax into. Again, if you if you like those kind of casual games, this mm -hmm. is what it is. We're we're not. Uh, uh, well, Randy is a professional actor. I'm not a professional actor, but um, I, I, I'll just mess around and, and mess things up and pronounce people's names wrong and all kinds of things. I just noticed yeah. that we've got our, you'll see our little character faces on everyone. Um, and uh, Clint's Dragonborn over there, Dragonborn Wizard, he's got these kind of wisps of lightning energy and things like that. It's just kind of mm -hmm. wrapping around his microphone, but it does look like he's smoking. <laughs> <laughs> We'll, we'll address that next time. But hey, we'll, we'll, we'll sort these out. Uh, just also shout out Sussy Scotty. Thank you for following the channel. And Travis Spoomer, thank you for subscribing. Thank you very much. It's much appreciated. Prime, uh, Amazon Prime subs, they, they do work. It's only a few pennies here and there. But um, we're trying to do our thing called the Road to Gen Con. So all of these series we that we're producing now, is so the Band of Badgers will appear live at Gen Con. Uh, so we're going to fly all the way over to the States. Uh, hopefully we'll meet Randy and Josh in person. If Clint can get over there from Oz, fantastic. We'll, we'll so lots of lots of drinks in person. It'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So hell yeah, Josh, you might know as well. So Josh, over to you. Yep. Hi everybody, Josh McGuire. Uh, I'll be playing Smigs Smee, the Goblin Rogue for this campaign. Uh, I'm here in the U.S. Uh, area. Uh, and I'm pretty excited about this campaign. I think it's going to be <clears throat> something a little bit different. It's going to be fun. I think we're going to have some cool moments in the dungeon. So I'm really looking forward to it. Cool. So are we ready, guys? Are we ready? I'm ready. ready? Oh, ready? yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it was right. like, yeah, I'm, I'm scared. Like, I'm not sure. I'm scared. Going first? <laughs> I'm legitimately scared. <laughs> Get ready. Right. So. There's no big kind of intro to this. So you all wake up to a beautiful morning. The skies are blue. The clouds are wisping by. There are tweets of birds in the, in the background, which is actually Steve's budgie. But it's, it's not a sound effect of any kind. It is just Steve's budgie. A twittering of birds. As you smell the smell of cooked bacon in the morning. And you realize, oh yeah, another day in the village of Red Tower. Now you've been staying at a tavern called The Cage. And you can smell there's bacon and eggs are cooking downstairs. What do you wish to do? I'm going to head straight downstairs and get some bacon and eggs. Yeah, good thing. <laughs> I let the bacon draw me downstairs. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Waking up, smelling that bacon. 
pop on the leather armor, and all you hear is a little pitter patter scurry down the stairs. Okay, great stuff. So, one by one, you kind of meet on the stairs and the landing of this uh, very kind of cool looking building. It's a bit of an L shaped building, but every now and then there are kind of these white uh, trussets and columns. And it's called the cage because this place is actually a giant's rib. Oh, we've just lost someone. Who did we lose? Your phone. My phone. We've just lost someone already. Wow. <laughs> let's see if that comes back. There we yeah, go. It's back. It's back. We're back. <clears throat> uh, let's see who did else did we lost? We lost. We've moved some cameras around. Let me see. Now I need to move this around. Bear with me, Steve. Go and have your breakfast. I, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll dig out a, a fairly hefty portion of uh, bacon and eggs. Um, I enjoy a good breakfast. It sets you up for the day. And I, I want to try and seek out Theo if he's around. Yeah. Uh, so Theodore is sort of sitting at a table. Um, he's calling over the the wait uh, the like barmaid or waitress and asking for more helpings of everything he wants. Uh, he's asking for extra things that they don't have and <laughs> uh, sort of waiting as uh, Oregon sort of walks over. I'll, uh, I'll thank my table, my plate down on the table, pull up a few, start to eat and look Theo deeply in the eyes. So you're putting together this, this team I uh, got some coins to spend, and well, I'm a bit low at the moment. Could do oh. some employment. Oh, well, uh, I wasn't quite expecting this uh, while I was eating breakfast, but I'm glad that you came. And yes, you are correct that I'm looking for a few adventurers to travel with me to the Scarlet Citadel. And um, pray tell what do you do you wear robes are you a scholar or or something no i'm a well you could call me an investigator sea watch a guardsman but my stock and trade um i'm learning to be a paladin if that's the correct terminology oh so it's my goal in life to bring justice and, and do good and leave the world a better place behind me. That's what brought me to Red Tower, actually. Apart from the rumours of the Scarlet Citadel and the treasure it holds, which I'm sure you'd already heard about. Oh, but that's I'm, why I'm here. Yes. Yeah. No, I'm I'm following another treasure hunter, one Randall Pennyworth. I've heard rumours of the Scarlet Citadel. I'm sure he has as well. I. Uh, well, I encountered Randall in my own hometown. He uh, he cleared out some mines that were close to us, with permission, of course, from the clan chieftain. But what we didn't know is that he would wake a horde of undead. They'd send upon our clan lands and did quite a bit of damage. So I'm looking to bring him justice. So I want to get to Scarlet Citadel, and my funds have run out. I heard about your job and that you were heading there. So, you know, our paths are lined, so to speak. If you're interested... <laughs> then uh, you'll have me. Well, I, I sure I'm keen would. To join up. I could use probably someone with some fighting prowess. I unfortunately am more the brains of the operation typically, but um, I, would, I would be glad to have you join. Um, as you see there, we probably need a few more people to join us, but um, I just put out the advertisement last night, so you are <laughs> very quick. <laughs> Right, well, the iron's hot. That's my motto. As this conversation's going on, you see a small goblin scurry up to the table, kind of pull myself up. Hey, hey, guys. Oh. Uh, hey, Oregon. Looks like you got enough eggs. Uh, you got enough eggs there for two. You need all that? Yes. Yeah, I, I need my daily protein fix. Uh, okay. Yeah, I got I got. got myself a decent, uh, decent uh, mix of bacon. Hey, has uh, anybody got one of them booster seats? <laughs> <laughs> you can barely. My, uh, Smigs can Smigs can barely see over the table at this point. I'm just kind of sitting there trying to trying to eat the bacon. You see, uh, <laughs> one one of the owners comes scurrying over. He's a uh, he's a fairly young guy. It's a brother and sister team who who run the place at the cage. Uh, you know him as Ambrosie. 
And he's like, oh, yes, Master Smigs, thank you. Here, here's, the, uh, here's the booster seat, as you, uh, as you requested. We've got the extra cushions for you, too. Uh, do you have enough uh, eggs and bacon today? Anything else you'd like? Oh, everything's great. Thanks for the, thanks for the seat. I'll just kind of grab it and stick, <laughs> stick it under me. And... <laughs> okay, oh. that's better. Now I can see you two in the eyes. Oh, um, uh, is, it, uh, pardon. I, I don't believe I have your name, Mr. Paladin. It's, it's, oh, uh, wait, well, well, I was not talking to you, short man. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Do you know this, this fellow? Oh, this is this is Smigs, and and yes, sorry, I was uh, rude in, in not introducing myself. I'm Oregon, Oregon Flamebeard. Yeah, we go way back. Ah, I see. You are a goblin, yes? Yeah, yep, yeah, that's me, Goblin are Smigs. You, are you also an adventurer? Oh yes, yeah. Well, welcome to the table. I'm very glad to have you, yes. Uh, he continues to watch you very carefully, though. <laughs> the, uh, so be behind you, behind you, Smigs, the uh, Ambrosi kind of uh, bends down behind you. He's got his kind of apron over his arm, that kind of thing. And he bends yep. down to whisper into you, he's that uh, the, the gentleman, the Theodore uh, Talon, He's um, he's uh, very well to do. He's uh, he's got a lot of money, and he's he's actually stayed in our uh, best suite we have upstairs. So um, I think you're in good company. Oh, just as this just as this is all happening, you see a very tall, red dragonborn in long blue robes walk up. Good morning, Oregon. Good morning, Schmigs. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Excuse, excuse me, uh, Sir, Sir Galen. Uh, I mean, you, you do have a, uh, a facilities in your bedroom. You don't need to shit in our tavern. Uh, if, I that... said shit, not Sh shit. Oh, sorry, I do apologise. It's you know, well, here, threw here, me off the chair for you, sir. There we go. I was, wasn't sure what you said. There must, must be all those now, teeth. Now stay a while and listen. Uh, <laughs> I've heard the conversation that you've been talking about, and Mr. Theodore, I'm an archaeologist of some renown. Oh. Maybe you would like to pay for my services. An archaeologist, a goblin, I, I, I don't quite know what you do yet, but an adventurer and a paladin. This is shaping up to be a nice little group here. Or the start yeah. of a really bad joke. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yes, I would. I, I could use an archaeologist. Uh, have you been to the Scarlet Citadel before? It's funny that you mentioned the Scarlet Citadel. When I was in my youth training to become an archaeologist, I came into possession of this document of a map to the Scarlet Citadel mentioning unknown treasures and wealth. It wouldn't oh. happen to have a little piece ripped off of it, would it? In fact, it does. It well, does. Excuse, excuse me, Ma uh, Master Galen, it's, it's, um, that's, that's quite interesting. Is that, um, are you... Uh... Is that for real? Is that serious? It seems legitimate to me, and all the research that I've done seems to suggest that there is no forgery. Well, there's, hmm. a, there's certainly we have someone in town, uh, in our village here, who who might um, who might be able to help you with that. His, his name is Conrad. Have you spoken to him yet? I haven't yet. He's I've on... only arrived with my friends recently. He's uh, <sighs> he's he's a kind of a. He's kind of a pain in the ass. He's um, a bit of a recluse, but he, he's a bit of one of these kind of sticks his nose in where sometimes he doesn't want to. However, he is the, probably the most accomplished uh, wizard that uh, we have in these parts. So, um, Wizard, you say? Yeah. I just happened to dabble in a little bit of magic. I, I, I wondered why. You had all these kind of things hanging off of you. You seem a bit um, magical. Oh, uh, dragonborns aren't normally known for their 
wizardly intellect, but I've passable, you know, tried to, tried to do my best. Good, good. Well, I suggest um, certainly your first stop should probably be go to uh, Conrad. Where can we locate Conrad? Well, Conrad's just on the other side of uh, I would say the other side of town, but uh, we're a village here, so it's not that far. Well, if we, after we finish our breakfast, if we think that would be the best move, I, I think it would be good for us to gather as much information before delving in there that we can. But well, hang on a you... second here. Go ahead. Yeah. Where's, uh, is there any way we can get some, um, some, come in here a little closer. Is there any, th any way we can get some, uh, any way we can get some poison? Poison. I need some poison. Poison, um, poison. yeah. Uh, I like to dip. I like to dip me blades in it. Some sorry, poison. Sorry, Master Smigs. No, uh, not not here at least. Um, There's no poison anywhere in town. Not not li little, little little vials of poison. No, no. Um, not unless Conrad could help you. I mean, is it classed as magic poison? Not quite. A at least in my understanding. Yes, and, right. and we only sell, you know, strong alcohol. Um, depends on what you want to do, but um, no, I don't. Is there somewhere so. we can? Is there somewhere we can buy magical items and yeah. potions of healing and so forth? Yes, well, medicine, um, perhaps, maybe. Might be, some, might be some poison there. Well, for for medicine and, and healing, um, you can certainly uh, go to. Uh, we have a, a a church in town. You could certainly attend there. Um, it's the Temple of Rava. Is is there if you're um, if you whether you follow that or not, you can always pay a price. That's that's perfectly fine. But for you know magic items and potions, you you may just want to speak to Conrad. Excellent. Well, Ambrosie, may I have another plate of bacon? Uh, certainly, uh, Master Galdian. If, if you just are you going to continue to to sit here, or shall I pack it up to your room? No, I'm going to take it with me. Oh, okay. You mean like a, in a doggy bag? That would be wonderful, thank okay. you. And he <laughs> trundles off back, back behind the bar. You see uh, Ambrosi and his sister that you've come to know as uh, Ariadna. Uh, and they're busy kind of making you a doggy bag of bacon <laughs> to take with you. Wonderful. Yeah, uh, I, I do wonder if there's any, uh, any, any, any rules. I mean, obviously this Scarlet Citadel place is... Um, it's, it's famed for its treasure, so I, I wonder if there's, you know, quite a few people just come here treasure hunting, and whether whether there are any sort of um, licenses you need to apply for or something like that. Do you, do you think we need to go and speak to somebody in authority? After oh, we spoke to Comrade, obviously. Hmm. I've sent people here before trying to excavate these secrets in this tower and the groups i have commissioned have never returned I, I i don't know if i need so many people disappear on these excursions you understand me that i i don't know if if there is necessarily a license needed <laughs> he sort of just <laughs>, laughs at himself <laughs> are you sure they just haven't Taken your money and run. Oh, I, I have ways of finding them, if they did. And he sort of eyes all of you. <laughs> so, uh, so follow up question then. Um, probably should have led with the. I've sent many groups there before, and they've never returned. Um, are you coming with us? Yes. Oh, that that's, that's is good to hear. the exact reason. I, I I wonder if the people I have sent before are just inept. Um, and therefore, I have come to do the job of myself. So, yes. Um, I may not be a sword shield carrying fighter, but I can handle my own if need be. And, uh, What's, what's the deal exactly? Are we, uh, we going for equal split on whatever we find? Hmm. 
I do think that that sounds the most fair, given the danger that I know lies within its steps. And I, I'm sure maybe Comrade or other people around town may be able to give us more information. But given that there is so much danger, I, I would say a fair share would be quite nice. That's great. I'm, I'm, I'm completely happy. I, I think we need to head to Conrad. How much are we talking? How much is down there? You tell me. <laughs> According to my map, it says untold. And that means a lot. Untold. All right. I, uh, I like when they make it mysterious. Mm. You see his uh, one red eye. He has one red eye kind of lights up a little bit. <laughs> Are you okay, Schmeeks? Your eyes going twitchy. Oh yeah, I'm uh, I I'm good. That's my uh, that's my good eye. Ah. <laughs> well, I'd love to hear how that happened, but um, I think we should get to this comrade. Yes. Let's move Excellent. out. Now, okay. yeah, go. Cool. So, would Smigs being a goal, uh, goal Gary agent, would he? I'm assuming he will know the location of Conrad, and can he lead the group there? Yeah, it, it's literally not far. This is a this is a small, small village. Um, <laughs> it's a few buildings across from where you are. What I can do is let's see if. <laughs> The let's see if this works because we had the issue with the the camera. I'm going to mess around with the cameras before I change screen. So bear in mind, everyone, the camera is going to go a bit funky. And hopefully, yeah, there we go. Uh, and is everyone in the right spots? They are. So that at least worked. So currently, you can see the map. But let's see if we can put uh, that there. There we go. So, this, um, is that going to work? There we go. So, for my players, my players, uh, you're starting in R4. That's the location. So, many years ago, uh, a few generations ago, a giant was felled here. And basically, when it turned into a skeleton, they've, they've got the rib cage of this kind of ferocious giant. And they've turned, in, they've turned it into a tavern, basically. That's why it's there. So, you're starting in R4. Now, Conrad uh, lives at R12, okay? So it's not far at all. Okay. You, <laughs> you see Smigs jump up from the table and scurry across the the uh, the floor mm -hmm. over to the corner where like, I pull up a rug and there's like a little trap door and I just pull it up and jump in. Come on, guys, let's go! <laughs> oh. And the door just shuts behind me. <laughs> and I just go down and... You're going to take the sewer route. <laughs> <laughs> you see uh, Theodore sort of opens the trap door and he goes, uh, I guess we sally forth then, huh? And he sort of carefully descends down. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll, I'll be two minutes and I just run upstairs because I didn't come to breakfast fully armed and armoured. So I'm, I'm just going to go and grab some axes. And I'll be right back. No problem. Well, I'm just switching cameras. I'll wait for you in. here, Oregon. So I, I hold the trap door and wait for Oregon to come back down. And then as he's coming back down, I, I slowly descend. You know when they say you never know what your players are going to do? <laughs> it's literally <laughs> across, it's like across the road and up, up a couple of houses. But rather nope, than walk, this is, this is quicker. Gonna, you're going to take the sewer. <laughs> <laughs> it's he's, less he's than five minute a, walk. Yeah. But he's this is how Smigs travels. He's the, it's the way he's got one. Smigs said, I, I, I know how to yeah. get there. We're going this way. <laughs> yeah. Smigs knows go. how to travel. Brian lies the better. That's right. That's right. All right. Let's go, guys. Watch your step. <laughs> you just see him. I'll be beside. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, so 
in the village. I don't even know if this, vi- if this village had sewers, but it does now. It does now. <laughs> uh, it's got a whole underground system. You, you got about. 50, Come on. It's a first level adventure. Look, there's giant rats. We just get in there quickly. <laughs> That's a good point. Right, some giant rats. Yeah. Uh, roll for a random encounters. <laughs> Spend the rest of the session here. Right. Okay. So you eventually make it under via underground. Smix has this uncanny sense of direction, knows exactly where he's going. He's like, he's previously mapped it out. He doesn't sleep, he just maps out the underground sewers. Yeah. I uh, stop for a minute, look at a little note, Mark, put it back yeah. in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> and heads directly towards Conrad's house. Now, we're going to say, we're gonna, at least you're not going to appear out of his toilet. Um, you're appear- oh, <laughs> <please. laughs> Have you ever seen, the, you ever seen Ghoulies? <laughs> so, um, not a good picture you're going to appear uh, somewhere on the, on the street which is now has sewer drains <laughs> which you unhatch and one by one you, you climb out <laughs> that seems totally unnecessary looking like right across the street to where the like, rip cage is you see, uh, no, don't you worry see- it was you see Ambrosia. It's way faster. You see Ambrosia just waving at <laughs> Strange. <laughs> hey! Hey, Ambrosia! See how quick we got over here? <laughs> Smigs is... I'm so proud of myself right now. <laughs> okay. Right. So you're outside Conrad's house. Uh, Conrad's home. Yeah, Conrad's house. I knock on the door. Okay. Is it is it a uh, is it a shop? Uh, it's it a, a it's a home, but um, it's a it's a home. It's a big home. It's one of the like most well presented homes that you've seen. You've been don't forget you've been staying here for a few days doing some odd jobs, picking up kind of rumors about Scarlet Citadel, and now with Galing turning up with this amazing archaeological treasure map. Um almost makes the rumours feel a bit true. So I'm I'm gonna just hang towards the back, try and get between Smigs and the door. <laughs> so the first thing Conrad sees isn't Smigs. Yeah. Do, do, do. Okay. Um Hello There's a is a is a there's a slightly uncomfortable wait. And then uh, the door opens, and you see a gentleman there. He's kind of fairly well dressed. Um, I'll put a picture up for everyone to, to to see. Now my players won't be able to see this unless they're looking at, at Twitch, but uh, there you go. So he's a, a fairly well dressed man. Um, he's fa- he's in his seventies, early seventies. He's got his big kind of Santa beard, dwarven beard, which is now braided. He's bald on top. He's got a tiny little top knot. And he's kind of a mix of fashions. Um, he's certainly not someone who's local. So I mean, someone who certainly looks like he's travelled. Um, his skin is kind of deeply tanned, and he uh, he kind of opens the door and says, "Yeah, yes. How can I help you?" I look at Galen. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Ambrosi the Innkeep has uh, suggested we seek your counsel in searching uh, for information about the Scarlet Citadel. And I have this wonderful document that uh, we would love for you to have a look at. Okay, yes, I certainly will. I mean, first of all, you uh, appear to be a, a red dragonborn. I haven't seen one of you in a many a year. Please do come inside. And he kind of ushers you all in. Now, as you, one by one, as you walk in, this is a really kind of nicely uh, laid out home. It's a it's a home come retail outlet, okay? There are all manner of work tables. There's some really nice glass presented cabinets. There are tiers of jewelry and jewelry making items. A small box of uh, uncut gems, just, just mined rocks, are just laying on the side of a table. And he's got various kind of magnifiers and tools for drilling and doing all kinds of bits and pieces. He has maps 
uh, a stack of maps and rolled up tubes. He has maps on the walls. And every now and then you notice mentions of Scarlet Citadel all around his home. But uh, yeah, so uh, uh, yes, uh, my my Dragonborn friend. Let's let's see what you have and let's see if it's uh, if it's real. I have seen a few forgeries in my time, but uh, as you say, here you go, sir. I pass over the document and I said, as you can see, it has a, a small tear on the top left corner. Uh, but uh, the document seems genuine. Okay, so he takes it over to one of his tables and starts to roll it out and have a look. He's He starts kind of licking his fingers and he's, he's tasting the parchment. He has a, a kind of magnifying glass that kind of comes over, then another one, then a different colored lens, which has some kind of gem inside. And he's looking through and he's like, hmm, yeah. Hmm. And then suddenly you notice his kind of well-refined voice drops away. He's like, ah. So, what do you want for this? It's not for sale. Then why bring it to me? We um, were wondering if there was any information on this that would help us in accessing the Scarlet Citadel. Well, accessing the Scarlet Citadel is the, is the easy part. You just follow the road. Indeed, but does it have any warnings? Does it have any indication of the location of treasure, etc., <laughs> etc.? Et I take it you've never been there. No, we have not been there. I have not been there person. maybe 20, maybe 30. Well, yes, indeed. 30 years ago, I have, I have been there, down into the depths of the dungeon. And let me tell you, it's not a nice place. It is fought with all kinds of dangers, traps, and who knows what kind of secrets are down there. But I believe that um, what you hold here is indeed the correct map. But sadly, as you see here, there is a part missing. Quite a vital part indeed. You, you see Smigs kind of look down and a little little unsure, but I slowly pull out a crumbled piece of paper from my <laughs> from one of my pouches. And I slap it down on the table. Hey, what, how about this? Will this, uh, will this help? Slide it over. Is uh, I, I, I take it your uh, your companion here, the one with the uh, the the magic eye. Is this the uh, is this the missing piece? Well, that seems to be a mystery that we've uncovered. Well, I you had no that the whole time. A missing piece. You had piece. that the whole time, Smigs. Well, I, you know, I, I found a little piece down in the, uh, down in the sewers, and <laughs> you know, someone flushed it down the commode. So I, uh, I've been, I've been hanging on to it. It seemed important, you know, seemed important. I'm a little disappointed in you, Smigs. Well, there's a lot of people disappointed in me, but I don't care. Just kind of walk off. That's okay. <laughs> I forgive you, Smigs. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you do you know what you... So, uh, before we continue, uh, Mr. Dragonborn, what is your name? My name is Galen Starkiller. Uh, sorry, Star Starkiller. Starkiller, yes. Starkiller. You've ki yes. You, you've killed many stars. Well, is fairies. That, that is that what your friends stars? have called you? Are, are you are you pulling my leg, sirs? Is that why no, you're here? No, you, you said you had a treasure map with a piece piece missing, and then lo and behold, we've solved that mystery already, and now, <laughs> Star Killer. Well, <laughs> the name is hereditary. You see, it's from my ancient ancient descendant, who was in fact a red dragon. And a and, star killer. Well, I'm sure he tried. Was he? Um, is it? Is it, a, is it a weird name? Is it? You know, we're, we're thinking stars as in stars in the sky, or, we, or is it more like stars? Maybe uh, I don't know. Like theater troops. I think I mean, maybe do, do maybe a, a thing few for bards. bards maybe bard. Bard it, maybe bards. Bard killer. But you, no, it's definitely maybe there was a bard called Star. Uh, a star you, bard. Maybe I. I it is such a strange name to call yourself Star Killer. Okay. <laughs> I can't help the name of my hereditary descendant, sir. Well, that that I is mean, true. Yeah. I mean, all we've been given the name is you is you, you're Conrad the Hermit. 
Oh, well, I, I'm, not, I'm not exactly a hermit. Um, I, well, I, I suppose you've got me there. I am a battle major, at least I, I was in my heyday. Um, but uh, what I do now is I, I, I make magic-infused trinkets. So if you gentlemen were in the lookout for, uh, let's say, a magic-infused ring or brooch, bracelet, um, those kind of things. I also sell scrolls, uh, various potions, as you can see. Got any poison? Sadly, no. Uh, ah, what is with the poison? Nobody's got any poison. I'm all out. So, you, with you, this missing piece, this. is there any... What was that, Oregon? Oh, oh, I was just going to say, you uh, you offered us... You were going to offer us something for this partial map. Well, yes, um, I'm a bit of a collector, you see. Okay, so it was purely a, a collector's interest, not because you wanted to act on it or anything, even though intention to go back to the Scarlet Citadel yourself. Yes, well, actually, the, these... I've seen these before, uh, and he goes over to a drawer, and you, you start to see him um, pull out an area of, of a folder. And in this folder, there are various copies of exactly the same map. See, it's not, uh, it's not a unique thing, you see. So, basically, um, these are only about 150 years old. These were, were sent out because... Do you know much about the, the history of Red Tower? No. Uh, no. We would we would love to know more. Okay, well, in fact, you, you mentioned the the uh, the citadel. The, the citadel here. Um, oh, whoa, let, let me. Let me uh, the citadel has uh, has not been here for for as long as you you may think. Um, it, there was a the the history of this area. You see, it goes back like sort of six hundred years, mainly because. Um, there was elves controlled the land. It was their land, and they they built what what we would call uh, nowadays a, a, a lodge, and not a citadel. The citadel came along much much later, and there was a family here. So the, the elves uh, departed. I mean, the, you know, that that happened, um, and then a family moved in. Now, the lodge became what we know as the manor house. The manor house now is where the mayor resides. You know, it's where he hold office. And that was under the uh, a family called the Gerhards. Now, the Gerhards have been around here for nearly 500 years. Their entire family. And it's quite a... When you think about it, it's quite a long time. Not for an elf. Oh, no, he was a, he was a human. Ah. Uh. So once the elves moved on... A few humans kind of moved into the area and took it, took it over. And then one by one, the family have kind of had their heirs. But it was, uh, it was only, you know, like 150 years ago when the dwarves moved in. You see, and the dwarves are the ones who created the Scarlet Citadel. Well, for what purpose? Is there, yeah. Well, just, I don't know, a big house, maybe. I don't know. It's just dwarves like stone. They're stone masons, and they made a house. I mean, uh, what do they call you? Oregon. I mean, you're a dwarf. Yes. And you like stone. Uh, I, I enjoy working with stone. I enjoy working with iron and many other minerals and metals. So there you go, you see. So, but uh, the citadel was carved, uh, or it was, was constructed out of carved red stone and that red stone is what was found in this area in fact that's what this town became known as uh, originally the town name was Redleaf, and it was only a kind of a, a, a while back when we had uh, we, we became renamed as red tower hmm. as what we are now now the gerhardt so families are quite interesting the gerhardt's they managed to access something in this area, apparently there are some ley lines, and when they cross, it becomes a magical gateway. And now you know all this, and that's why this kind of village has thrived for so long and expanded. Their power was unmatched in this area. And what they believe was underneath the citadel that the dwarves constructed were areas could, that could only be accessed by a type of magic. Now these maps that you've got here, um, it's just part of a collection. The dwarves drew these up and sent them out to other clans for those who wish to come here to study 
dwarves who studied magic. Interesting. So, does this map have an indication of the ley lines? Not this map, no. But we, we are aware of where, they, of where the ley lines are like. Where they cross, we actually have uh, what's called the, the... We have an archway there. And that is where the ley lines cross. Now, if you go there around midnight, you can almost feel the magic. During the day, what was, there's nothing. What was the purpose of the magic? Well, the magic we believed um, back then, when it was more powerful, I mean, it, you know, predates me. I'm, uh, I'm only human myself. Um, it allowed one to pass through the arch and cross into the Fae. Fae. The Fae, the Shadow hmm. Realm. Essentially, other fae. dimensions. And you've options. been to the tower and seen some of the treasures that I've heard. I've Where did those? Citadel, yes. But I've heard there are treasures and secrets, and I mean that's why I'm here. Well, yes. Uh, I mean, when I went down, or when I was, uh, when I was brave enough, or, or maybe just foolhardy enough, when I went down there, I went down there with a band of adventurers, just like yourselves. But we ran into um, a lot of undead. And um, I think I was the only survivor. You I got think? Out of, I got out of there. I, I think I was, I was scared and I, and I ran. I saw two of, my, two of my band fall to these uh, undead beasts. And then I ran. I ran. What form of undead? Um, not living. Um, were they zombies or skeletons or uh, we ghouls? Um, ghosts? Mostly zombies, I guess, yes. We didn't really see anything more than that, yes. Okay. So, the tower is full of some zombies. <laughs> Nothing our band of adventurers can't take care of, no? <laughs> You know, there's, there's certainly zombies down there and probably far worse. I mean, I only got, I think the various adventurers come through here. They always, you know, they tend to buy some trinkets off of me. And then, um, yes, I, I don't really see many of them again. Oh. So what is this map worth? I'll give you two gold pieces for it. No. Oh, whatever it's worth, I own. Uh, I own ten percent of that map. Remember that little piece? That was mine. Very, 10%. very fair. Very fair, Smitch. And do you happen to sell potions of healing? Um, I, I, I tend not to. Um, the, 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 the they're at the church. They're at the church. The uh, church of Rava. Uh, they tend to get a little bit uppity. And I prefer to stay away. What 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 form of magical items do you sell? Well, mostly is a custom custom jobs. If you wish, um, I can imbue most of the magic that I that I uh, can manifest into items such as rings and brooches and whatnot. You just tell me what you wish, and I can create it for you. I have some uh, ready to go. Obviously, if you have the coin. What about um, rings of protection and so forth? Uh, I, I can do it if you have the coin. Well, what's the price? Well, uh, let's start at 200, shall we? 200 gold pieces. Right. Very uh, fair. I, I, I'm sure Theodore can pay for one for each of us. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Uh, our friend, friend again. our friend. Oh, oh, yes. Um, <laughs> how about we go adventuring first, and then we see. I have not the cash to spend on four rings of protection for each of us, or one for each of us. But we are going to go deeper into these mines. If we do return with maybe some 
things for sale? Will we be able to barter or figure something out with you, good right. comrade? Certainly, I, I am always open, especially to coin. Now, as you can see, we have a, a few other items. We have a, you mentioned potions of healing. I don't exactly sell that, but I do sell some potions. Now, these are called bezors, if you're interested. Yeah, tell, tell us a little bit about them. Well, bezors are, um, there's a, has anyone told you about the woods? No. Okay, so no one's woods. told us anything about this town. Okay, well, <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of history. I mean, again, as I mentioned, there's a, over 600 years of history here. Now, the woods, you see, the woods. The woods are home to a variety of uh, beasts and uh, horrible magic. There were, there's a, a witch in the woods called Zula. And she's, uh, I wouldn't say she's a friend, but she is an acquaintance. And uh, she makes these bezoars and I sell them for her. And it, what you see on the, the ones he's pointing out to you are typical potion bottles, the, uh, the round base, the cork at the top, lots skinny neck. Each one, there are five. Each one is a different color. Some have bubbles going up. Some have bubbles going down. But each one is a different color. Now these is something uh, I don't think you're quite ready for yet. But when you feel you're ready, come back. And these may help you. That was very cryptic. Indeed. Um, as I said, my door is always open to coin. Okay. If, if you wish to visit the Citadel, you can follow the old road out of town. It will take you through the woods. Oh yes, the woods. I mentioned that, didn't I? Now, many years ago, these woods used to have owl bears, and it was the dwarves who bought, who brought trained owl bears to our village. And it was red leaf. We even still have the original owlbear stables. Now they used to um, use them as mounts and farm animals and all kinds of things. But they almost revered these owlbears. When the dwarves left, the owlbears just uh, were left to their own devices and made homes in the woods. So do be careful. Okay. I'm beginning to piece this together. There's lots of history and no one knows why or what's going on. Ooh. Very well. So when, you, when you're when you in the Citadel, you only remained above ground? You didn't, you didn't discover any of the secrets or... No. Uh, we, where did you get attacked by the undead? Did they come out at night? No, I, I, I went down. I think I went down maybe three or four levels. Sometimes the memory gets a bit hazy, but um, you know when you when you kind of think back to those to those days. I mean, when I was running for my life, I, it was uh, a, a scary time, a terrifying time, I, and I don't know how long it took me to find my way back out. But on the way down, there were many things. I mean, we're not the only people who've gone. Every maybe once or twice a year, a, a party of adventurers hears the rumours. Or will bring me one of those leaflets that Master Galen has. Trying their luck to find these treasures, these hidden trinkets. But always they get stopped. How many levels there are, who, who knows? But look out for the Gerhards. They're still down there and it's still his home. What was the name of the uh, the head of the Gerhard family? The original? Oh, I mean, that goes right back. Um, let me have a look at my notes here. No, he was actually just called Gerhard the Elder. <laughs> there's there's no, re no written record of his actual name. Looking at the maps and things that he's got up on the wall and things that are like, you know, all the interesting things, mm -hmm. is there anything that I can see that um, would give us any clues about the the layout or the actual design of the Skull and Citadel? No, there is nothing that has come back that shows what is beneath. There's no maps. 
Okay. So he he's just got trinkets and things like that. So yep. ultimately, he doesn't know very much. No, he as he says, he's been down there. They got attacked. He got out with his life, and then realized that adventuring was not for him. Selling magic, that's different. <laughs> that's how he made his gold by selling to other adventurers. All right. How far from uh, Red Tower Village? Is it to the Scarlet Citadel? How how long will we be on the road and and through the woods? Oh, it, it, it's not long at all. I mean, probably the best part of an hour. Oh, okay. So we won't. I can get us there in half the time. <laughs> <laughs> half the time. Trust me, I can get us there in half the time. I did. I did. So there... I don't think you should go uh, into the sewers near the Citadel, my friend. It's uh, that's you probably you won't know where you're going to come out. Um, but no, don't worry. Are, I got it covered. There are all kinds of um, things to find and see. If you go and have a look at uh, um, at the ruins, and then see what you can find. Well, the I don't know if we'll are, get much uh, more information than this, but yes, Galen. Uh, the ruins are above the citadel. Yes. Yes. Well, you see, yeah. you, so the citadel is now ruins yes so it's what's below the citadel right and it's only is there a safe way of getting past the owl bears well yes just, just don't annoy them just stay away from them <laughs> okay I mean, when don't an owlbear gets bear. angry, you don't want to be, you don't want to be standing. You don't there, poke the owlbear. Exactly. No. You don't. When that big kind of, you've seen, you must have seen, heard stories about the grizzly bears when they stand up. When an owl bear stands up, it shakes its feathers as well. It's, yeah, it's very frightening. Oh, and the sound oh. they make. Oh, have you seen one? I've seen, I've seen several. They're they're in the woods. Sometimes they're nice. Sometimes they're not. You know, obviously if they're hungry. Uh, yes. They're, but, they're, 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 they're fine. Again, as you said, just don't poke them. Yeah. All right. Well, I believe we are off to the church to maybe buy some healing potions. Yes. Um, I Well, Mr. Conrad, thank you for the history lesson. Um, we will probably be in need of your services. So when we return... Happy to, happy to help. We're always we interested in, yes. in learning more, learning more about the Citadel. All right. Whatever you find. So if we were to um, map as we went, for example, we'd be interested in buying those from us? Well, that's a, that's a very good offer, yes. If, um, if that's something you think you're able to do, yes. Why not? <laughs> I'll think on it. But yes, uh, as Theodore says, thank you for your time and, and the history lesson. It's been most educational. Indeed. And I wish you all the very best of luck, truly. Could you um, point us in the right direction in the church? Uh, I know yes, it is. It's, it's, <laughs> it's right. <laughs> if you just come out of the door, turn right, follow the, follow the road down. It's right next to the Red Tower at the main gate. I know another um, way. <laughs> yeah. there, is a, there is a funny twang. <laughs> did you uh, <laughs> did you step in something on the way over? <laughs> so did we um <clears throat> did we formally sell this map? Did did no. we do that? No. 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 Okay, we didn't. We kept the map. Okay. I don't trust him. Okay. He has like eight. He doesn't need more. <laughs> okay. All right, good. Yeah. And uh <laughs> When we came in, you said that there was a. Uh, you said there was a table mm -hmm. with some with, gems with on. Some with gems. some gems. Yeah, that's gems what I was paying yep. attention to. Too. <laughs> what um, <clears throat> what color are those gems? They are red, green, yellow, blue, and black. <laughs> okay, but then they're not cut gems. They they are rough, like fresh not freshly mined but they are mined they're not cut into gems these are rough stones and the like of the posters and things on the wall that reference the uh citadel scarlet citadel mm -hmm. what 
what kinds of posters, what kinds of postings were those? Uh, most of the stuff uh, are various maps. Some indicate ley lines, but they're all various kind of years of age. So some kind of show the area around uh, what you know as Red Tower, the village. Show Some show it as a much smaller settlement as it is. Some seem to be marking uh, water lines, ley lines, and uh, older roads that may have been passed through. Thank you. Hmm. Now, if you make your way to um, the Temple of Rava, I believe it's called, um, you can pick up some healing of potions. They are priced at 50 gold, point, uh, gold coins. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm willing to put up 25 gold pieces for the group. That would be half of that. I'll put up the other half, and we can have a potion for an emergency. Okay. So you purchase one potion of healing. Right. That will go well for Oregon when he defends us. Yeah. Right. <laughs> who, who would like to carry it? Yeah. Let, let, let's give it to Oregon. I, yeah. I, I think one of you should have it, just in case you need to get um, me back, so to speak. Well, I, I can hold it with my magical components. That's fair. I, I can kick in uh, ten towards another one, but that, that's it. That is me tapped then. No, that I just spent all. I just used all my gold to go in. So that's yeah. So we got one. Yeah, I think that's unless what unless, we're unless at. Smigs is holding out on us. Um, Smigs came that. up to our table and said they were poor. So I don't yeah, yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have any gold, and I like empty. I pull my pockets out, and they're like empty. There's like those little butterflies that like pop out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I've got my I've got my I've got my rations and adventuring gear all sorted, but um, yeah. that's that's me completely broke. Not a cop to my name now. Okay, let's hope you find some gold soon. <laughs> All right. So are I we still always... are we still at Conrad's? No, you're now at the <laughs> Church of Rava or the Temple of Rava. Oh, we already left. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, and we've bought yeah. a potion. Yep. Yep. Yeah. We can always smell sell smigs. What? No way. Uh, you, you, you'll be fine. I, yeah, I just but, reached out and put my hand on one of my daggers. <laughs> it's okay. Whoa, I'm whoa, just joking, Schmigs. <laughs> we are a group. Let's at least stay that way, at least as far as the Red Tower, yes? <laughs> yeah. I like the way Theodore's thinking. We stick together. We're a team. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay, so you're going to hit the road towards uh, the Citadel? Um, I, don't... I I have an interest. Oh no, never mind. We're broke. I, ha I had an inter I had an interesting thought. Let's let's cut out the middleman and visit the witch and buy some bezels ourselves. <laughs> but we're broke. Oh no, ten gold. <laughs> Although we I could still we're... go and introduce ourselves to said witch. <laughs> we could. We could. Maybe the witch. Actually, the witch lives in the forest with the elbows. Maybe she knows more than this conrad fellow because yeah. I, I i got the sinking feeling that he just wasn't being honest with us yeah and i bet she'd have a i bet she'd have some poison <laughs> she's the oh. one she's the one who has the poison i know it boys yes. i know it <laughs> well what say you theodore if it's on the way why not is it on the way <laughs> you will have to uh, find is. out. You don't. He, um, Conrad did not tell you where in the woods. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> there, there's, um, I presume, guards at the gate to to Red Tail. Uh, the guards at the gate. Yes, it, it's a friendly, um, it's a friendly village anyway. So it, yeah, they can tell you which direction the citadel is in. And could they tell us where Zulus is as well? Do they know? 
Uh, I, I will say in advance, no. But uh, you can still ask. Oh, Maybe uh, we go to the Citadel. Yeah, we can meet her later. <laughs> That's fair. I'm yeah. a bit scared of owl bears. Yeah. Yeah, oh, uh, we're, we're trying to we're, we're... around in the forest. I can almost <laughs> taste the poison! We've got the random encounter table. Here we go. That's <laughs> oh, a natural one already. Damn it! The first <laughs> roll! It's the first roll of the... Is that the first, first roll, in it? It is the very first roll, but it, it's, it was, a, it was a, a playful test roll and it rolled a one. <laughs> Swap that dice out straight away. <laughs> I've got All a new right, set so for tonight. Yeah, I think we're heading towards the Scarlet Citadel. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Yes. Just See, rip that band-aid off. Yeah, let's, well, that's what we're here to do. <laughs> let's, let's get to the Citadel. Let's explore a dungeon. So you hit, you find the road. <laughs> Uh, almost a yellow brick road. It is the road out of town, and it uh, veers off to the side into the woods. You walk about, let's say, 45 minutes. And you know, it's just just a Baron's message in chat. Yeah, bad dice rolls. Look, bad dice. But this is a physical, not a digital one. Bad dice roll. Um. So as you enter the woods, straight away the temperature drops. The large canopy over the top is is starts to cool you down. Uh, it's a nice, still a nice sunny day. You still hear all the birds, and every now and then you can hear um, hoots or howls in the woods. And when the canopy breaks, every now and then, high up in the sky, you see sort of big feather wing, uh, feather wings just floating and gliding around on the air. It seems like today is such a calm and peaceful day for not just yourselves, but for nature as a whole. So are you saying that you would like some bird background noise? And it's the one time since we started playing tonight that he's actually quiet. Yeah. Your budgie is quiet, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we timed that perfectly. So... As you continue on the woods, you notice that the road starts to become more uh, weather beaten. There are more weeds. The undergrowth starts to kind of take it back to nature. Nature has claimed this route. This route. Obviously, not many people have come this way in, in a fair while. And, and when they do, it's not that many people. Until eventually, you break cover. From the woods and you see a structure it stands atop a low hill and it kind of slopes off gradually all around the slope is gentle but the ground is um, rugged broken by ravines there is boulders there's tangled uh, what do you call it brush uh, fallen trees and then you see the keep the citadel now, when the keep was in use, the ground around it must have been cleared for several hundred yards in every direction. But then, since the fort's fall, the trees, uh, bushes, and brush have all regrown right up to the fortress itself, even inside the courtyard. As you take time to kind of um, take some tentative steps around the outside of the fort, you realize that the fort, if you can imagine it, you start to kind of think back what this building must have been like when it was all uh, magnificent and in place. This each red piece of stone was constructed to here. The fort must have been breached at possibly the northwest and the southeast corners, but the rest of the walls and the main keep are still standing. The outer walls are about 15 feet high the main tower rises an incredible 40 feet and the secondary keep uh, the secondary keep is 30 feet tall but heavily damaged despite all the damage and decay it's easy to see why this place is the scarlet sister as i mentioned the red stone blocks even with all the the, the years of weather beaten nature trying to claim it back you can still see these stark red bricks. But no one comes here anymore, except hopeful adventurers like yourselves. 
So the old road from the town of Red Tower is now no more than that weed choked truck. So that is where we're going to put you. And just to kind of give you an idea, my players can see I have a map here next to me. I'm just going to switch screens over so the audience can see. So bear with me, the screens are going to go a bit wobbly before I change them over. Here we go. Bing. Let's see if that works. Dun, dun, dun. Zip. There we go. So, to give you an idea of the ruins and the fort, you can see that. So my players can see that. You, the audience, can see that. Uh, these are our heroes. We haven't put them into place yet. I've just put coloured bottoms on there, and we can call them out. So, uh, red, that's Oregon. You're red. Yep. Uh, Galen, you are yellow. Smidge, you're green. Green for Goblin. Eggs. And Theo, you are blue. <laughs> okay. Now, that's just for this. The reason I've done this is that uh, for those of you who know Band of Badgers, we have a miniature painting show. We will be painting these minis, if I can get one on screen, there we go. They're highly detailed minis. These are from Blacklist Games, and we'll be painting them. So slowly, slowly, you'll see the heroes taking shape, okay? But here we are. So you've gone around the perimeter. As I mentioned, it was quite open, open wide, but it's got some trees and all kinds of uh, bits and pieces following you. Uh, like rubble and uh, just collapsed walls and things. So just be careful where you stand. It might be a bit uh, tricky. So being of Dwarven heritage, um, and despite what Conrad said, that Dwarves liking stone, they will admit at the time, but we do have a specifically called stone cunning. Uh, I want to take a look at the walls um, and, and try and fact check some of the things that he said to us, like the dwarves built this place about 150 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I want to try and assess the way that nature has taken it back since it was breached with the trees, the ground and so like and try and figure out how long this place has been abandoned and whether there are areas that are, are weakened and stuff like that we should avoid. So I'm gonna roll a history check. Uh, that's a 20 in total. Dirty okay. 20, not a natural 20. Dirty 20s. I miss saying that. Dirty 20s. <laughs> so, uh, so this area here, we can see my pencil. We, we, got, yep. we got the high tech value here. <laughs> so this area is kind of would be, would, would have been the main gateway. Now this square here is your tower. Okay, which is kind of in ruins. And this is the extra tower here, which is also in ruins. It's got more damage. Uh, and these were, uh, what did I say? It was about 20 foot high. These are the arrow slits for protection that you would expect in a fort. Yeah. Okay? But all of this is, is the main structure and wall. So there's no way you can go up this way. And if you go in is where the fort decided to literally just crumble in on itself over yeah, many hundred of years. So is that square block the in, inner keep? Uh, yes, this is all the inner okay. keep. Okay. Uh, so in in terms of when it was built, does it look like it was built about 150 years ago? So was Conrad being truthful about that? Yes. Okay. Uh, and how long has it been abandoned? Ooh. Um, let's have a look. I think we're at least talking a hundred years. Okay. So, is it, it is it, it safe was... for us to pass that, that wall, do I think? You know, we're only a small adventuring party and chance of it collapsing on us are quite low, I would assume. Yes. Uh, Theodore, Galen, Smigs. Um, I guess we need to go in and 
search the ground, see if we can find some way down into the lower levels. Uh, the tower looks safe enough. It, it does look damaged, but these walls are thick. They're well built. And Conrad was at least telling us the truth about when it was built. These these walls are about 150 years old. It has been abandoned for quite a while, though. So just be careful where you tread. And if you're unsure, ask, and I'll try and help. I'll tell you uh, what. I'm, I'm not always I'm not always the bravest, but uh, I, I'll go ahead and lead. I'm uh, I'm pretty agile, you know, pretty dexterous. I uh, I, I'll go ahead and scout a little bit, and I'm gonna find like maybe sort of a crack in the wall or something, and just try to go through. Okay, N um, whereabouts do you want to go? Um, you you tell like, me whereabouts. Guide me, and I'll put you there. Okay, so like that first little crack. It's like a crack in the wall, right? I guess these, these are not cracks. These are the arrow slits. So these are arrow holes. They're up it high up in the wall, about twenty foot high. Okay, where's the actual? Where's the entrance then? Is it around the other side? This is the entrance here. So this would have been. This is a little rubble and a cl collapsed wall. And okay. This would have been the main kind of doorway into the inner keep. Okay, just put me like uh, 5, 10, 15, 20 feet up then. So I'll go through the front door and go in yeah. about 10 or 15 feet. Okay, that's fine. All right. I'll, what... uh, I'll lag behind. This <clears throat> makes by, by about 15 feet. I know I'll uh, get one of my axes out. Sorry, Gaden. I'll, 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 I'll follow Oregon. And I will go at the rear. <laughs> okay, what do, what do I see once... I have dark vision, so I'm not sure how yeah. dark it is in here or anything. No, but this is it, this is all. What do most I see? of this is open air. There's a few kind of few things okay, you were no, looking at. There's no roof or anything. Okay. Yeah, there, there's just bits of beams and everything else. All the wood has long ago rotted away. This, this okay. the keep when it was attacked was burned. All right, perfect. Uh, so the original building was burned. And this is the keep. So this is pretty much all the wood has gone. You said attacked. DM and the fourth wall. Uh, yes, it, it's been attacked. <laughs> so this is this was a long time ago. So whatever attacked it, can pretty much destroyed this, and no one has ever returned to the citadel to reclaim it. Attacked wasn't a part of uh, the story we were told, right? Mm, no, so, no, no. That's why that was yeah. a Freudian slip, I believe. <laughs> well, I, me I mentioned it was the north. What was it the northwest and southeast corners? So, uh, it looks he's, like the, he's the, north fort, the fort was the breached. Yeah, is what I said. Northwest and southeast. Okay. So north is down. Uh, right. According to the map, um, let's bring up my version of the map. That's the wrong one. Um, north is that way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. yeah. North is that. Yeah. Way. So you've come okay. from the south, heading north <clears throat> towards the sit down. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so and what am I? <clears throat> what, like? So as you, I, as you walk what through this, seeing? which seems to be quite a enclosed walkway, you can imagine there may have been soldiers or guards in this kind of corridor. But now, it still has some majesty. As you kind of step out into a wider area, you see all of this space around you which would have been uh, very immaculate at the time. But now it's just rubble. History has kind of left it away. Trees have since rooted up and grown. That's how long this, this has kind of been here. Okay, so this is kind of like a central courtyard type? Yes. Okay. Now, All up, right, do up, I... up, up on the left over here, you see... Uh, it's still intact. You see a stone stairwell, and this takes you up onto a balcony area, a walkway over here. Further past, all the way down here, I feel like a weatherman. It's going to rain over here, it's going to be sunny <laughs> over here. Yeah. All the way. These maps are big bites. So these maps, just for those who are listening and interested, these are um, uh, Scarlet Citadel, Coldwell Press, produce a map pack. Every single dungeon map is represented. But it's it's like on an A1 piece of piece of paper. They're big. These are big detailed maps. 
So that's why I love them so much. The way up over here is just rubble and all kinds of bits and pieces um, just smashed and laying around. However, I'm going to say that Smigs, you also pick up on a few other details now that you've kind of walked into this courtyardish area and you see you kind of hear this hey uh hey Oregon are you uh are you breathing kind of kind of hard <laughs> uh, not yet we haven't really you know, <laughs> put any physical effort oh man Quite, quite, quiet down. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a hearing, hearing something. Did, do you hear that? I'll, uh, I'll stop. I'll, I'll move up to him first, and then stop and listen as well. Okay. So, so just uh, make sure you've got here. Yeah, I actively listen. Okay. Do a, do a, here it is. The first proper roll. Do a perception check for me. Uh, yeah. That's a 17 on the dice, and I believe yes. my perception plus is 4, so that's 21 total. You also start to hear, from all the noises, as the wind is coming through uh, the brickwork and everything, you do hear what appears to be heavy breathing. It's very rhythmic. Um, I, th there's plenty of rocks on the ground, isn't there? Yes. And pick one up, and I'm gonna heft it into the centre of the courtyard. Try okay. and make some noise away from us. See if the breathing stops or its attention is drawn in that direction. Yeah, you're just gonna kind of pick a like a, a big bit of stone the size of your hand and lob <clears> it. Yes. So like towards this tree kind of area. Like yeah, here. perfect. Yeah, exactly there where I was okay. thinking. Yep. Okay, so you do that. You, see, you hear the stone just crack along the ground, but nothing. The, the heavy breathing, the rhythmic heavy breathing is still going. Okay. Do you think that's the, uh, you think that's the wind? No. No. Yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't either. <laughs> I, I'm thinking it's an owlbear that may have wandered in here, but I'm hoping not. Oh yeah, I hope it's not one of them big, uh, well, them big owl bears has them, them scary. Standing up, the fle feathers, the ooh ha ah, noise that it makes, it scares the shit out of me every time. <laughs> Should we uh, creep along the, the wall rather than go out into the center of the courtyard see if we can make it over to those stairs? Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good idea. I'm gonna start, I'm just gonna keep low and just try to um, sneak around kind of the well which way do you want to go do you want to go the inner perimeter or do you want to try to go all the way around is that what you no it was the the inner perimeter so where from okay. where I am turn left and go along that wall okay so I'll just I'll just try to sneak it kind of low to the ground just real slow walking along that that wall on the left yeah yep yeah yeah right across yeah right across there just sneaking kind of low to the ground as quiet as I can go Okay. I'll, I'll turn to Randy and Galen, uh, sorry, Theodore and Galen, and um, wave them forwards to come up to where I'm standing. Move up. Catch up to him. Yes. <laughs> but you start seeing Theodore sort of hug the wall very closely and just a hand on uh, his hilt, which has a rapier in it. Nice. Okay. So I can I can hear something breathing rhythmically. Smigs heard it first and I checked and I agree. There's something in the courtyard, but I don't know what. I tried to make some noise in the centre to see if it would wake and it doesn't appear to. So it must be either in a deep sleep or or waiting for us to make a move. I suggested to Smigs that we creep along this wall and head towards a staircase that appears to lead somewhere. Uh, if we go single file and you follow me, but just keep your eyes open and be careful. Okay. Uh, I'll head off after Smigs. I'm not even going to attempt to stealth. 
I'm wearing chain mail and carrying about lights. So I'm not built for quiet. <laughs> 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 Snake's like, shh. Keep it down, organ. The slower he goes, the. <laughs> it's like Tin Man from Wizard of Oz. You need some oil. Clink, 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 clink. All right. How far? So, Smigs, how far do you want to go around? How tall is that tree? Uh, let's say 20 foot. You can go in okay. anyone. Can yeah, we I'm... hear the can we hear the heavy breathing now? Do a, a perception check for me, please, Gaylee. Uh that's a natural one. You do not hear any breathing at all. Okay. <laughs> can I first do first roll of the game? First first roll is a one. <laughs> Sorry, Good one to get out of yeah, So you, Yeah. Good. That's a 19. Did, did you say that was perception check or that was stealth? That was stealth. Yeah. That was stealth. Boom. You you were just, you hugged the wall and it's, even in daylight, in the when they hit the shadows, it's almost like you blend in. Which is really impossible to do because it's red brick. <laughs> but it's like, and they have colorful red <laughs> outfit on. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's nice, just, it's just nice kind of, stealth. Nice disguise, yeah. Theo. <laughs> Even with all the rubble and the stones, like big chunks of stone, and small stuck like small stones, but you're gonna move. You just silent. You practically glide across. So, ha- so Smee, do you want to go up the tree? Yeah, like I, <clears throat> I, I, I'll say to say to Oregon. Uh, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go see if I can get us a better. Uh, a better view. And I'll just scurry over to the tree and I'll, I'll climb up as far as I can, you know. Yeah. Let's which do, one a, makes let's sense. do a acrobatics check for that. Okay. Oh, where we go over here. Not great. Um, that's an 11. Okay. Uh, let's, let's just say you get halfway. It takes you around. It's harder to climb then you fall. Okay. <laughs> so what we do is uh, I'm going to switch back to... That's awesome. <laughs> we'll switch back to the map again. There we go. Those are great trees, aren't they? Yeah, they are. <laughs> he's, just, he's just hanging there he's with the He's in the tree. <laughs> He's, he's making it look cool, though, isn't he? Yeah. You can see he's like, oh, he is. shit. <laughs> just, my claws are just in one of the branches. I'm just hanging. <laughs> Okay, so, um, Oregon, I'm trying to remember everyone's name. Oregon, you're moving around. So what I will say, so Smigs, um, you didn't get as high as you did, but now your vantage point, you're kind of just holding on. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to say you're, you're kind of facing that way, so you can't see what's behind you. Okay? Okay, I can only see towards the, yeah. the back side. You're, you're facing that way. Okay, do I see anything else being up higher? Is that any, anything? Not any higher, no. Not okay. Alright. See see that? Right, so the the balcony that's at the top of those stairs. Yes. There'll obviously be a wall where I'm standing. Yes. How how high is that wall? And can I climb from where I am up to the balcony? Or can I see where I'm at above the ground? Can I see level with the balcony? Uh, no, because what I'm saying is you're holding onto the tree. So unless you can, you want to look backwards. You're in a position where you're in a bit of a precarious position. Okay. That you're looking forward, so you can't see uh, Oregon move behind you, below you. But uh, yeah, this goes up about let's say 15 feet, 5, 10, 15. So it's 15 feet up into this walkway. Okay. Can I can I attempt to, to climb the wall? You can attempt to climb the wall. Yeah. Do give me an uh, let's say a strength check. Athletics, yeah. Well, go on in athletics. <laughs> I was going to say stroke first, just because if, if the wall falls down on you, but hey. Uh, it's an eight in total. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> so you try to start climbing the wall and get nowhere. Okay. I'll, yeah. I'll give up on that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And just uh, just move towards, continue to move towards the stairs. That would be my intention, so. Yeah. 
this lady kind of give up and, and move there. Yeah. So Galing and Theodore. Yeah. Um, I I I nonchalantly like walk just steadily out about um, directly in front of where Theodore is. Another twenty feet, like level with that white pillar. Yeah. And can I see anything to the right? Uh, yeah. So the, basically, the the ruins are there's nothing in them. You, you've just got these kind of empty chambers. So this uh, over here, to, on your right hand side, um, mm -hmm. it is just kind of collapsed chambers. Let me bring up the bits and pieces. So these are. These buildings lining the fortress walls were originally barracks or workshops or stables. Now they're mm -hmm. almost completely in ruins. Their slate shingled roofs have fallen in and only portions of the interior walls remain. There are no doors, there are no windows. The original okay. floors are kind of buried under all this rubble and uh, pretty much brush right. is just growing. Okay, then, then I'll continue like forward and left another 20 feet towards the tree that uh, Smigs is in. Okay. You can see Smidge kind of stuck at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going uh, to... Uh, yeah. You, you go. No, go see no, I was just going to hug the wall and move as, as close to uh, our paladin as I can. Or... There we go. So you also, as you come around the corner, you can see more of this kind of internal room. You see a smidge just kind of stuck in the tree now. But you can see where Oregon seems to be heading. There's a stone staircase. It's still in good condition, heading up into this walkway above you. What people want to do? Uh, I'll head towards the stairs and start walking up the stairs. Okay, so I'm going to take you around this way. Yeah. Um, I'm going to continue what I was doing, which is which is heading towards the stairs. But and I'm following. Yeah. Following that wall. Well, oh, that was that was a smooth turn. <laughs> now you can see everything. Though. There's a little bit more of an angle there. So. Um, Galen. I, I'm, I'm behind uh, Oregon. Keep up, yeah. yeah. I'm not going by myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Galen, as you step out past the tree, can you do a perception check, please? Uh, that is a 19.23. Okay. So just as you kind of walk past the tree, your ears suddenly pick up that detail. There. Can I tell from where? Somewhere over here. And then you realize Smidge and Oregon, whoever did a successful check previously, you realize the rhythmic breathing stops. I mentally go like that. Signs of the O to halt what, and I stop. What, what's this? <laughs> that means stop. I was trying to be quiet. So, so oh, okay. As, Sorry. As Galen speaks, <laughs> <laughs> the the rhythmic kind of breathing changes to a slow growl. It's a deep growl to begin with, and then you hear a. As obviously big, heavy footsteps start to kind of come towards you. Now, um, Oregon and Theodore, you're first to see this. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> owl bear. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh. I'm going to take you out of the tree. There we go. And we're gonna I'm out of the tree now? No, you're still in the tree. I'm just going to remove okay. so you can see through it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm see... 10 foot in the air. <laughs> you can see this owlbear starts stalking oh my God. out of this kind of debris area. 
And just to add to it, um, Oregon, as you kind of get to the bottom of those stairs, you realize that the bottom of the stairs, that's not rubble. Those are bones of various sizes and animals <laughs> and kinds. And then we're going to leave it. We're going to take a quick break there. And we're going to come back and see how they deal with an, with an owlbear. I'm just Excellent. Gonna, I'm just going to remove this and put this over here and put that back over there. I'm scared. So we're ready. I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I'm in a tree. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best place to be. So we're yeah. going to take a quick break um, and we'll see you again in a second. See you in a bit. Bye bye.
and we are back. Here we go. Right, so we we just had to get you know a quick power break, get some extra drinks, stock up on the chocolate. Everybody's ready to go. Now, uh, we we just left our heroes with an owlbear. <laughs> at, at level one. At level you. one. I know. This is <clears throat> this is great. Um, let me just show you the nice picture of the owlbear. There you go. Um, so you obviously my my heroes and my players can't see this, but you, the audience, you can. Yeah, they they just woke it up, or rather, Galing woke it up. He was talking. Didn't realize the hand signals. That, you know, everyone's seen enough movies to know what that is, apart from Galing. And um, what's a movie? <laughs> theater, <laughs> theater. <laughs> Star killer. Was it Bard killer? Star killer, <laughs> Bard killer. It's all the same. <laughs> yeah, right. it doesn't quite have the same ring. No. <laughs> no. So this is, this is the, uh, the owlbear that they are facing. So my players can see the map. We're going to be, you know, uh, the audience, we're going to be flitting between um, the, the players and the map, but my players can already see the map. Let's pick up where we were. Um, so everybody, for the very first time of this entire campaign, we're going to roll initiative. Oh. Go for it. Inish. Uh, oh, dear God. Man, not great. <laughs> nice. Sorry, that's a <laughs> right. I'm gonna go around the houses. Let's go, Oregon. A natural. Uh, five. Oregon. Uh, five. Okay. Theo. Twenty-one. Well done. Very nice. Nice. Uh, Galen. Ah, uh, natural twenty. So twenty-four. Oh. Nice. Take it. Yeah, get out and, of the way. And, and smidge. Smigs. 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 Uh, 11. 11. Yeah. Okay. Right. Oh, nearly knocked my glass over. So we have the Albert. The up first is Galing, followed by Theo. So I look over at the Albert. Hello. You look like you're hungry, Mr. Albert. Would you like something to eat? And I slowly open my pack. And as, you, as you're doing big... this, as you're doing this, mm -hmm. the Albert kind of stops. And then you just sit, kind of rear up onto its hind legs. And it's like, <sighs> I keep pulling out a big dripping bag of, that's got greasy, like, bottom, and it's, it's like, mmm, bacon. As soon as you say, mmm, <laughs> bacon. This owlbear looks at you, its beak opens, and rather than doing like a roar, which you'd expect from this thing that does look like a bear, apart from it has an owl head, it does a high-pitched screech, like, and starts, oh. starts charging towards you. Okay, this is gonna make, make some contact. What would you like to do? It is charging. Uh -huh. Well, there's not much I could do, except throw down the bacon. <laughs> Drop the bacon <laughs> just in front of it. There you go, boy, girl, Ellie. <laughs> so you, 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 you want to drop and, it? You want to throw it at it? How are you gonna? No, I want to like just drop it just in front of it and then step back okay. under the tree. This thing, uh, we'll put you under the tree here. This thing charged like does about three steps. Hits the bag with its beak and just tears it around. You see bits of bacon flying everywhere, bits of papers going everywhere. It's on the floor, it's gobbling up <laughs> the bacon. That's a good alley bear. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to do, David? Um. Uh, at, at this stage, uh, I'd like to hold my action 
and if it attacks me, I will uh, then cast Magic Missile. Okay. But only if it attacks me. Only if it attacks you. Okay, fair enough. Theo, you're up next, followed by me. <laughs> yeah, I want to see what, what the owlbear does, so I'm also going to hold my action. But I'm, I'm still, like, hugging the wall, uh, trying to get smaller. <laughs> you can do that. You got So the stairs are going up above you, so you have that kind of, you know, a, st a, a stone stairway. Mm -hmm. It's up to you what you want to do. The, I mean, the owlbear mm -hmm. is there. Mm -hmm. You can stay there and you can just stay hidden. It has not seen Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to stay hidden. Here. Okay. Yeah. So you're already in that kind of corner of the stairs and the wall. Yep. You've got plenty of natural shadow there. You just... Vroom. Right. My turn. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> okay. Um... Galen, you are so lucky. The owlbear just kind of puts its big ass down on the floor and like, boom, and is just chowing in to this kind of bacon. <laughs> Next up, excellent smidge, followed by Oregon. Smidge. Okay, so if the owlbear is chowing down on the bacon, Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to say where I'm at. I'm just going to hold my action and watch. Okay, you're still and if you're still it, in the tree. Yeah, I'm still in the tree. Um, but can I can I at least get myself positioned where I'm not just like hanging by one of my arms? Can I can I be sitting on a branch yeah. or kind of like just yeah. get myself kind of positioned where if I need to attack, I you know I, my hands are free and I'm not and I'm pretty. That's, that's fine. You didn't you didn't try to continue to climb. So the amount of time no. that everyone has been sneaking around and the owlbears comes comes out, you kind of yeah. got into a better position. You can sit on a branch if you want to. You can yeah. have both hands free. Yeah, I just want to get positioned. I'm holding my action. If the owlbear in fact charges anyone, then I will execute my action. Yeah. Okay, Oregon. Remember in our conversation with um, Conrad, who we didn't quite trust, granted, um, I remember remember that the Alvels were brought to this area by the dwarves. They were used as mounts and they were used as uh, domestic beasts. So I'm going to start talking to it in Dwarven. Oh, aren't you a pretty one? Yes, yes, look at the fur and the feathers. You're a fine example of an Albert. Fine, fine example. It's a shame the doors have gone and you've had to fend for yourself in these woods. That must be hard, I understand. And well, we've got some more food for you if you're interested. And I'll start pulling out a couple of days' rations, like the, the dried jerky type stuff. And what I'm going to try and do is throw it behind the owlbear so that from where it's sitting eating that bacon, when it runs out, it's going to turn round and look in the other direction. Mm -hmm. And as I'm doing that and saying those soothing, calming words, I'm going to still head towards the start the stairs so that I can then move up the stairs to the balcony and the doorway that appears to be behind us. Okay, so as you do that, and you throw... You right, so you've lost two rations, obviously marked that off your sheet. You've thrown yep. two rations back where it was, back where it came from. Yeah. Okay. It's sitting there on its bum, enjoying this kind of well-cooked bacon. And as you start to move, it looks directly at you. And as you throw those rations, it kind of looks back and then kind of looks back at you. And you just see a big kind of, a big snort come out of its nose. And it just continues to eat the bacon. Okay. And then you edge round. You're almost at, nearly at the bottom of the stairs anyway. You edge round. You're now at the foot of the stairs. But you notice around you, as I said before, just before the break, there are lots of bones. So you are now on, literally on the first step of those stairs. Okay. Backwards. Yep. So you're still kind of facing the Albert. I will. Uh, I will now say to Smith, Theodore, and, and Galen, move slowly, quietly if you can, but head in this direction. We need to. Uh, we need to get up these stairs and into the building away from it. 
Okay. Top it around. Galen, what would you like to do? Um I I, I say the um the bones and the uh everything that's at the base of the stairs are they all like crunched and chewed on or are they they do look like they are have been well chewed yes there are uh let's say teeth marks to make it easier they're not just whole bones they've been gnawed on yeah um does like where is the base of the stairs does it look safe or does it is it um is, does it look like this is where they've just basically been ambushed um potentially it looks like um this is rubble that just kind of has ended up together right so okay. right now this is bones you don't necessarily you know you would assume i guess that the bones have come from what the owl bear has killed or eaten mm -hmm. um not to say that owls owl bears are tidy creatures we don't know that yeah i haven't been around one long enough to understand i always run away so, um, there was just bones. Um, okay, so what I'll do is I'll slowly move to hopefully 5, 10, 15, 20, just past Oregon, up the stairs. Yep. Do you want, to, just for clarification, do you want to go in front of the tree, which is closer to the owlbear, or a wrap back around the back of the tree? Giving you distance um, from the owlbear. I would like to. I'm, I'm guessing the second I start moving, he's either going to watch me or do anything. So, like, I'm still a little bit away from him. So, what's that? I don't. I mean, I don't know. Does You've he have maybe, a ten foot? You got maybe ten foot gap between you and him. If you go okay. in front of the tree. Okay. Uh, I'll go. I'll go in front of the tree because that's the more direct route. But um, yeah, yeah, I, I'll do that. But and I'll, I'll just. Did you like that bacon? There's more where that came from. I promise I'll bring more back next time. <laughs> so as you pass in front of the tree, past the owl bear, um, he's sitting on his bum, he's enjoying the bacon, and suddenly he's like, Vroom! he's back up, he's back up onto all fours. And he's almost kind of paused what's left of the bacon. He's only got a couple of strips left, like underneath him, like he's pouring it underneath him. He's he's protecting the bacon. Oh, I, I just I just go. It's okay. It's all yours. And so and, I, and then I'm backing away up towards the stairs and up. And he's just watching you. Like he's following you. Yeah. The whole movement. Yeah. I figured something like that would happen. So. Okay. We'll so I, I continue up the stairs. Yeah. Well, Oregon hasn't gone up the stairs yet. Uh, <clears throat> Theo, what would you like to do? I'm going to be as quiet and stealthy as I can and try to sneak up the stairs okay. if I can. Do a perception, uh, not perception, a uh, stealth check. All right. I can do those. 16 plus 7, 14, 13. 23. Fantastic. Again, making no sound. You walk past all the rubble. You come out of the shadows. You're perfectly fine. Being so silent, uh, you, you see this owlbear is still just locked on Galen. Even though you walk past Galen, breaking <laughs> the point of contact, the owlbear just does not see you. <laughs> it's just <laughs> fixed on Galen. And you manage to kind of Get in front of Gaiden. Okay, now it's my turn. Okay. The Albert, um, where it's now, because it's up on all fours, is watching Galen, and as he's moved to, towards the stairs, he keeps on turning. He has one last look down, picks up the last of the bacon, and then just kind of casually, he's still watching everyone. One foot backwards, and then slowly, the last thing you see leaving is his head. As he slowly turns back, heads heads back towards where he came from. So, well, I, I, I say, guys, that was that was fun, wasn't it? 
That was an inspired choice, getting breakfast to go this morning, Gary, and I have to say. <laughs> well, I just had this feeling that bacon would come in handy. <laughs> that was good. Well done. You managed to uh, get out of that one. <laughs> when you put that on the, on the board, it was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No one, this is where we're there. starting. Oh, well done. <clears throat> All right, so I'll, I'll I'll come down the tree then. Okay. There you go. Oh, there you are, Smigs. Nice of you to join the party. <laughs> yeah, I was uh I was up in the tree. Uh, uh well done with the bacon. But uh, next time, save a little bit because I get a little hungry on these uh on these adventures, and if I get hungry, then I get uh. You know, I get angry, and we don't. Uh, nobody wants to see me angry. His, his eye kind of lights up. I have bit. more. <laughs> don't pick up okay. Hand. Okay. Good. 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 Now I'm just gonna scurry kind of over to him, the, the bottom of the staircase. There. Uh, are you taking the lead again, Smix? I'm sorry. What's that? Are you, you going to take the lead again? Yeah. 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 I'll take the lead. I'll go up the stairs first. Okay, so I'm going to guess that the, the Go I'm going to guess that the entrance is in the inner keep. So if you can head that way, Smigs. Yeah. So I'll, I'll I'll make my way up the stairs, and I guess straight forward. Yeah. So what you see when you get to the top is this is it's, you know it's, there's a stone walkway here. Where's my where's my fancy high tech pen? There we go. So this is a stone walkway and what would have been two massive doorways, one here, one here, since just rotted away. So you've got two open areas to rooms. And you can see inside there. Okay, so what looks like in this room, initially here, you can see what starts to be a staircase, but it just ends in rubble. Okay, the, the stairway is just literally just collapsed. The roof has just flattened it. The floor, what would have been above, has since just collapsed in on itself. So that, that was a staircase up into the wooden area of the keep? Yep. 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 Okay, and the, you said the other the other staircase area, is is that go down? Uh, no, this one this one was going up, but it's it's since collapsed. So the floor above has collapsed down into into this room. Okay, so there's no way to get up there. Okay, there, there's no way to use this staircase. No. Okay. You can uh, still go in and explore, the, but yeah. Is the ceiling of the building still on it, or is... not? Not this one, no. No. Okay, so it's still open to elements. Again, you can see sky. You can see birds flying high up above. That that's it. I think it's the other one, Smix. Okay, so I'll take a... I guess I'll take a left. Okay, so you're going this way. What's everyone else want to do? We won't uh, spend too up. much on, on the minis as such, but... Um... Yeah, I'm going to follow you, Smix. Okay. I'm, I'm following you. I'll, I'll follow up as well. Like, just, yeah. Everyone... So you're all at the top of the stairs? Yep. Okay. Okay, and I'll go ahead and slowly creep into that room. Into the one you're heading towards, yeah? Yeah, right so there. Do, do a, as you said, slowly creep. Let's do a stealth check. All right. Oh, come on. Good God, these dice. <laughs> <laughs> Throw these away. Um, this is horrible. Uh, that's a seven. Okay. You're not as quiet as you think you are. Uh, but you do find um, more in this room, more rubble. It's an empty room. You see a tree. Somehow a tree has grown on this upper floor of this area. Uh, there's more bones, more scattered rubble, uh, all kinds of bits and pieces. Unless you have, you know, you want to have a sort of good look around. It's up to you. Yeah, I'll, I'll kind of. I won't yell, but I'll just medium kind of voice back. There's a uh, there's a bunch of bones in this one too, so uh, we might wanna might wanna be careful. And then I'll start, you know, I'll just kind of look around to see if I can I can find anything in this room 
Anything that's shiny. Okay. So basically, we'll, we'll pick you in the middle and say you're searching the room, have a look around. Okay. Do a quick uh, perception check for me. Uh, that's better. Um, uh, that is a 19. 19, nice. Okay, so in amongst the, the rubble and the bones and everything else that's there, you find, um, weirdly, you seem to find uh, feathers. Like owlbear feathers? Like big feathers. <laughs> okay. Well, it looks like there's some feathers here. I found some feathers, guys. Okay. Me, uh, oh, I, I move up if Oregon moves up as well. Yeah, we, yeah so if you want to go in here, <coughs> Oregon, which room? Yep. Uh, I'm going to go in the same room as everyone else. Yep. Uh, and I'm interested in that part of the rubble there. Okay. Yeah, I'm going uh, to join them. But keep my uh, in that corner. <laughs> there you go. Disappearing. Yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Very good. <laughs> so, Theo, that... Theo, I will say that while you're standing in that corner, you're watching these three, and you can see you always take the moment to assess the situation. So, with your advantage and your stealth, you always kind of, by taking those extra seconds and assessing the situation, you see the tree to your right. You see your colleagues searching around in this mound of rubble. And you see uh, the sky above you. And by taking those moments, you kind of begin to center yourself. And that's your your natural passive perception just gives it time to eke its way out. And you realize as you're looking around that where you are, where you're standing, you see a feather, and you see another feather, and then you see quite a collection of feathers. And all the while you're hearing in the background calls of various birds. Way out, out not in the not in the room, not in the rafters, just way out outside. They all start the, the noises of the wind start to filter through, and you hear these sounds of these birds flying around. Okay. Um, how how big are these feathers? Do you want to pick are one up? Are they like? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, you go down and pick one up. It's big. So, I mean, these they, they range in size, but you're, mm -hmm. you're talking sort of eight to twelve inches. So these are big feathers. Some are old. Some are no good. Some are beautiful. These would make great quills. Wonder if the, we could sell these. I'm more wondering what left them here. We, we have an owlbear downstairs, um, and I hear a lot of birds up above us. So it's a, a bit interesting. Um, Oregon, anything going on with that pile of rubble over there? Just the part of rubble, does it look natural like it's, it's fallen from the wall? Or yeah, it this is all, all bits of collapsed roof, wall, um, rubble. Yeah. All right, can I, can I still have a search through? Yeah, go for it. I'm going to shift a few pieces and, and take a look what might have been underneath, if anything. Yeah. Um, that is a 14 in total, roll a 10 on the dice. Okay. Uh, you start searching through, um, start searching through the rubble, and it appears to be, as you're kind of pushing the gravel and bits of dirt to the side, uh, you realise that the floor beneath the rubble there's is cracked. Appears to have done some damage to the floor. Um, could mean there's something below us. Uh, but if this was solid foundation, it would like that. That's fine. So, Smidge, just to point out that you can now also hear bird noises. They weren't there before, but your passive perception is really high anyway. And now it's kind of obvious to you. Like chirping bird noises or like 
screeching, screeching dangerous big coring <laughs> noises. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just I'll kind of get low to the ground, looking up. There's something. There's something coming. We gotta we we, we got we gotta get out of here. I'm, I'm worried these feathers are too big, and I'm hearing something. I'm gonna move around towards the rubble. You said there's cracks in the ground. Can we actually yeah. start? Can we potentially fit through those cracks to go no, down? He, so Oregon is literally it's like a the size of a hand. He's realized that there's a crack in this. Don't forget this you went upstairs. This is a flooring. So there is obviously a room below. There's another room below us that we couldn't get in. Yeah, there is there no way no for you entrance. to access this from downstairs. Okay. But this room appears to have whatever this wall fell down has cracked the floor. And there basically there appears to be a hole, but is filled up with rubble. It's gonna take you time to remove the rubble to gain access to the hole. I said, Hang on, hang on one second, lads. Stand back for a moment. And Galen begins chanting very quickly, and with a flick of his hand, he casts mold earth and moves the rubble to the side. Yes. <laughs> nice. Oh, very, well very done. Well, played. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Very well done. So, okay, so you do that as, the, as it just... How do you want to do it? How you describe how it happens? Uh, as I'm channeling, the like uh, my eyes are closed, but the, the the rubble seems to like swirl up, not not in a tornado, but like just little bits and pieces. They swirl together like a like a mini cyclone, but really really slow, and they just sort of gradually move as if they're stacking a stack of books to the other, other to the side of where they are into the corner. Nice. So slowly, bits by bits, you channel that magic. It happens smidge you hear or basically let's do a uh let's do a perception check everyone roll a perception check for me that is a 12 for me 16. okay theo passed oregon dirty 20. you passed gailing you failed smidge 15 15 for me that's fine you passed. i'm casting so yeah of course i yeah. failed so you're concentrating on this that's perfectly fine while Galing is doing all this, and you're watching the, this dirt and the rubble move on its own accord, the three of you hear thump, thump, up on the roof. <laughs> and as you look up, you see two, what appear to be faces, looking down back at you. Two female faces. And I'm gonna, I'll, I'll send you a quick uh, picture before I before I send it to uh, before I show the audience. But let me, uh, right, I'm gonna put it into Zoom chat for my players, uh, for <laughs> the audience. I will. Oh, of course. Nice. <laughs> of course, of course. For yeah. the audience, there you go. You can see that. Um, so looking up above, you're almost on like these wooden, uh, not wooden because the wood's not there, but the stone crenellations are up on the top. You see grit in these massive bird claws and these two female faces peering down at you as they shriek. One, phoom, darting for Galen. The other one going straight for Oregon. Can you both, uh, can everyone roll uh, initiative for me, please? As these two harpies attack. You. Two. Nice. Ooh. Okay. Four. <laughs> 17. Right, one sec. 15 for me. Oh, I'm not, not there yet. Um, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. There we go. Okay, let's go around the table. Oregon. Nine. Nine. Initiative is not my specialization. It is not, is it? <laughs> Theo. Four. Ooh. Mm. Yeah, it's the, it's the worst I can roll. So. <laughs> At least he got it out of the way before combat. <laughs> yeah. Galen. 17. 17, okay, well, it's better than theirs. Initiative is my thing, apparently. 
<laughs> and Smigs. 15. Okay. I got a 1 5. Mm -mm. Uh, okay. Uh, what am I? Oh, yeah, Harpy. Right. Okay. <laughs> I can't remember what <laughs> I was. have any more right. bacon. Yeah. So, darting out, we have one um, attacking Oregon, and we have one attacking Galen. They just, you've never seen anything move this fast. These kind of, uh, they don't even let go of the like these stone bits they're on. They just fall forwards and fly straight at you. Galen, you are up first, followed by Smigs. So has the the rubble moved? Has that revealed anything? Yep, yeah, it's starting. It's starting to to do that. So you're in mid cast as this happens. Okay, then there's not a lot I can do if I'm mid cast because I would need to finish. Okay, so you're you're um, gonna be doing that this round as this happens. So we move on yeah. to Smigs. Okay. Um. So there's one that's at my base, right? Yeah. Uh. Yes. So it's in the air at the moment. These are literally coming down. Okay, so it's still in the air. Still How in the far air. up? Yeah. Basically, after How your go, they're going to touch the ground. How far up is it still? Uh, let's say the rooftop, because it had an extra layer that fell in. So it's about 20 foot up high. Okay. And they are, boom, it's a dead drop. Okay, they're not messing around. Yeah, so <clears throat> I'm going to... Uh... It's hmm, be interesting. Okay, I'm going to uh, pull out my short bow very quickly. Yeah. And I'm going to take a shot. Go for it. Yeah. Roll those dice. Let's come on. Let's go, short bow. Nice. Uh, that's a 24 to hit. Yeah. Good. And that will be doing six points of damage, piercing. Six. Six points. Yep. And then since it's not at my base, <clears throat> it's coming kind of down. Uh, right after I do that, I'll kind of like barrel roll off to the side and try to scurry back behind that tree. Do a barrel roll, Fox. Yeah, and uh, bonus action hide as well, do nimble escape. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna shove you there now. There we go. Yep, and then bonus action hide. Yep. Zoom. Okay, harpies go. The first one slams into Galen, literally <laughs> pushing you straight into this rubble that you've been trying to focus on, face first, bodily into this. You see the claws just grab hold of his back, shove him down into this rubble. Uh, the other one, Harpy number two, <laughs> um, Oregon. You see it coming straight for you, and just before it hits, it reverses its move and uses its claws to attack. Okay? Yep. That is a miss. I've got a six. <laughs> that is a miss. <laughs> that is a miss. Nice. Okay. I did the, it. the one who hits um, Galen, because you're in mid cast as well. Just as you hit the rubble, because you've pulled most of that rubble away, there wasn't much there anymore. You, with the harpy attached to you, fall through into the chamber below. It's complete okay. darkness. And all you've got the light is this shaft of light shining down from that cracked ceiling now above you. This room as you're kind of flailing around, you realize it's just a mound of bones. You've literally, you've literally just landed in a, some kind of meat tomb. Okay. Now we're gonna carry on with the next person in round, is Oregon. So what I'm gonna do is I am going, I have, handily, I have an extra sheet, and I'm going to bring this up here, and I'll show this for the audience as well, one second, because my players can see it. 
Let's switch the cameras over. There we go. So, let's try and get all of that in. You can see the main heroes over there. Um, Galen, you have crashed through with a harpy on top of you. Everyone else, you can see the hole in the floor there, the shaft, and Oregon, you're also facing a harpy. It is now Oregon's turn, followed by Theo. Um, did I see him go into the hole? You saw him, literally, as you got attacked, you just saw him go through. Okay. Um, I'm going to leap into the hole after him. And I'll, as I do so, I'll shout out, uh, Theodore, Smigs, take care of this one. I'll go after Galen. And I'll just dive into the hole. Okay. You literally just jump, not knowing how deep no, it is. Not knowing how deep it is. Okay. Do an athletics check for me. Yep. Um, <laughs> two. Uh, that is a total of five. Okay. Um, you're going to take uh, four points of damage as you land into this heap of bones. Unceremoniously. <laughs> mm, okay. Um, can I see the, uh, the, the, the harpy? Can I yes. The harpy? So you see the harpy uh, on top of Galen, on top of his kind of back shoulders. Yeah. Um, that music was a bit, a bit too loud. Then. Let me know, audience. Let me know if it's the music is too loud. Um, so you see the harpy just clawing at Galen on his back. Uh, Galen is face down into these bones, kind of just flailing around. But as you've Sorry. landed in here, your eyes from instantly change because yep. you're used to dark. Yeah. So and all that. Um, I need to I need to get that thing off Galen. So brandishing my uh, my axe uh, my my hand, I'm going to pull out a hand axe from my belt into my off hand, and I'm going to take a swing, an uppercut swing at the harpy, and try and nice. you know hit it upwards and away off of Galen's yeah. back. Yeah. All right, wind up. Go for it. Bigger swing as I can. That is a 19 on the dice. So what that's dice? 22 in total. Um, and Get it. if you would like to take seven points of damage, that would be awesome. I and then I'll follow that up with sort of a, a horizontal swing with my hand axe in my off hand uh, and really just sort of reinforce the, the step back that I want it to take away from Galen. Yeah, okay. Um, that's probably a miss. That's a seven in total. Yeah. So you, you yeah. put some effort in. You thought it was going to be enough. It wasn't. This thing has got its claws into Galen. It's not going anywhere. You've got the, you got a, the weight of a red dragonborn. Yeah. Keep it. Okay. Is that the end of your turn? Uh, that's that's the end of my turn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Theodore, you're up on the other side. You have a harpy that's landed in front of you. Two of your comrades have gone into the hole, and Smig's disappeared. <laughs> yeah. Uh, great. So. Hmm. You see the harpy just kind of watching disbelief as the dwarf went jumped into the hole. And then just turns around and does that thing that birds do, like watches you, uh, starts to stalk towards you. It starts stalking towards me. It's yeah, like, no, I'm gonna <laughs> jump in the hole. <laughs> go jump in the hole. I'll run around the side and, and jump in that hole because I think I'm by myself. Like I, I know he said that Smig, uh, Smigs is up here, but I don't see Smigs. Probably. Yeah. So uh You could do a perception yeah. check. You have you have time. It's just looking Fine. around. I will I will I will look at Smigs and, and see or try to and I rolled a two plus my uh yeah, five. No, yeah, I have no, no idea that Smigs is here. You can't see. <laughs> so I'm running into the hole. <laughs> okay. But not as cool as our uh, our dwarven <laughs> friend, probably. So I'm gonna roll athletics. You said. Yep. Do an athletics check. <laughs> yeah. Oh, net twenty. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Yeah. 
Let, let's, so, see how, let, let's, let's try this a different way. How do you want to do this? <laughs> so, oh, nice. What I imagine is the harpy sort of turns his head and starts like stalking towards me, and he's like, oh, ah, uh, and he, he backs into the corner, realizes he's in the corner, and then he's like, okay, plan B, and runs around into and just jumps into the hole. And as he, uh, ooh, face first, you gonna dive face first or feet first? I'm gonna go head first and use my shoulder on the harpy. Nice. How about that? Go for it, yeah. <laughs> shoulder barge on your way. <laughs> yeah. Go for it. So he, he sees where the harpy is and just kind of does that and rolls out and, and tries to roll out of it. But yeah, he uh, he is down the hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go for it. Right, okay, so you do, let's, um, I'm just gonna say you do that, boom. You've managed the shoulder barge. Do a strength check for me, just to make sure the, mm -hmm. the shoulder barge works. I just saw that Big Tough Pete is in live chat. Hi, Pete, how you doing? 18. Perfect. So it just starts to stalk. It takes one step towards you. The wings whoosh, come out. And you go, boom, shoulder barge straight past it. You feel the feathers pass on your face as you dive. <laughs> dive into <laughs> complete darkness head first and you land as well at, in a pile of bones that's the only thing that breaks your fall mm -hmm. and you can hear fighting in the corner all you see is the shaft of light and that and you see uh where well, it's going to be galing's legs flailing around with this harpy on top of them okay top of the round it's galing followed by smith Okay, so, um, like, I'm, am I, am I stuck prone, or like, am I grappled, or am I, is it? We, we, like, we're, just, I... we're just saying it's on top of you. So you tell me okay. how you want to wrestle out of it. Okay, so I would like to. I would like to, if I could. Yeah. As it's on top of me and it's got its. Um, legs into my shoulders. Like, reach over and grab one of its claws. Yeah. And roll around and cast magic missile up into its chest. Oh, fantastic. Ooh, nice. Do it. Let's just <laughs> do it. Blank. That sounds fantastic. Let's just do it. Just roll. Just do it. <laughs> so you managed <laughs> okay. you manage to get onto your back. You got it? That's a total of 13 damage. Oh. That's 20, 26 in total. Yeah. Mm. That's that's nice. Well done. So magic missiles. Uh, it shrieks. Yes. I don't know if they talk. They mostly sing, but I don't know if they can actually. They probably can. I'm just going. <laughs> <laughs> This, this is a wild harpy. <laughs> uh, is that the end of your turn? You've basically tried to roll over. You've you've cast. You're done. Uh, and I tried to like. Well, I guess I can't do anything else except like try and push it off. But that's not really a bonus action, is it? So no. Okay, that's so, it. That's fine. So smidge, you're upstairs still. On your own, <laughs> you, you just saw Theo just jump and dive. You're, you, you see the uh, harpy stalking around. It's trying to sort of, you know, pick up if anyone's still there, and it starts to walk over to the hole. It's kind of uh, sees everything that's going on down there, and then after one, you see it just <laughs> fly up. It flies up. It, Bursts up out in like Batman with a without the Gatling gun, just bursts out and out into the sky, flies away. Okay, so I can't see it anymore. It's completely nope. out of sight. Gone. Okay. Ah, thank God this guy's here. He left me. Well, they probably couldn't <laughs> see me because I'm a I'm such a sneaky guy. I'm so good. So that's probably why. So I just barrel roll out from behind the tree, <laughs> just all by myself. Just I'm doing this all for myself, right? I for some reason, for some reason, I just thought it was an umpa lumpa move. 
<laughs> I just kind of like. <laughs> yeah, I pull one of those. A couple little quick barrel rolls. Right <laughs> towards and then the, down uh, the hole. <laughs> towards, yeah. 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 Say what? nothing, just right down the hole. Yeah. Okay, you land. Thump. Again, in a pile of bones. Uh, okay. We are. Da -da 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 you see everything that's going on, but I'm going to say where you've landed, which is here. Okay, it's over there. Yeah. Um, you pretty much used your movement. So if you have okay. ranged attack, yep. you, can, you can kind of see, because you've got dark vision as well, haven't you? Yeah, I got dark yeah. vision. So, so I'm going to grab that short bow again, yeah. throw it out, and just in one quick motion, it's like the bow and the arrow comes out and fires. Nice. Let's do this. Uh, that is a 19 to hit. 19 hits. Yeah, go for it. Nice. Okay, come on. Come on, big roll on this one. Come on, give me the crit. Not a crit, but pretty close. Uh, that is a seven points of damage. Seven damage. Oh, okay. The arrow fuds deep into it. It howls in pain, but it's still standing. You know what? Oh, can I still do it? Can I still use a, a Fury of the Small? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Okay, so I'm going to activate Fury of the Small for one more point of damage. Okay. It is still standing. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> nice try. All right. I like it. But, okay, yeah. I tried. It's, uh... Okay, Harpies go. It's looking around. It knows it's in danger, but it's it's gone kind of animalistic at this point. It's going to take one last attack at Galen. It's a uh, roll of four. That's not going to do anything. Um, it tries to attack. Now it's going to try to get away. It starts to flap its wings. It's now got an arrow in there. You can hear it. It's causing its pain. It's struggling. Like one wing is moving <laughs> fine. The other wing is a lot slower. It's going kind of diagonal to try to get I'm out. also holding on to its claw. So you like reach up, grab hold of its foot around the ankle. And if it's trying to get away, as a attack of opportunity, I'm going to drive my dagger up into its chest as well. Your curvy, wavy dagger. Go yes. for it. Take it down. That's a 13, 14. 14 to hit? Yeah. Hits. <laughs> Roll your dagger. dagger. Take it. Five damage. <laughs> See ya. Dagger. You plunge the dagger into its chest. And it... the You can feel the give go. It just falls to the ground dead. Well done. You killed Woo! it. <laughs> <laughs> Almost well two. Well done, everyone. <laughs> Well done. You, you deserve that for the mold earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That was a, that was a great move. Oh, I must say, I, I didn't think mold earth would the... come in handy that quick. <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> um, can I just check that the, the feathers are on this harpy that we've killed? Yeah. Are they roughly the same size, shape, and color as the ones that are upstairs? Uh, yes, you, you, oh, okay. you, yeah, if you were picking up the feathers, yes, you would have recognized it. Okay. Oh, it is very dark down here. Um, does anyone have a light? Uh, yes. I, I, I'm I, fumbling I, around for my bag, but I can't uh, see. I, I slowly get up from underneath this harpy and shrug it off and yep. open up my backpack and pull out a bullseye lantern and then just uh, light the light light the candle and 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 turn the the lantern on oh thank you um it was much better just to just to confirm yep um uh, 
Theodore, you, you can't see in the dark? No, Galen, I can't. Smigs, what about you? I can see in the dark. I do have a uh, a torch, but I can't see. And I was just pre- pretending like my character is not as adventurous as he's pretending to be. So <laughs> I I have the bullseye Latin, so. So, great. Okay, so uh, I guess that means uh, you and I, Smigs, will be uh, taking the lead on this one. That's right. Let's go. Okay. Further we go. Further we go. I, I will say this dungeon is... There are parts which obviously are lit, parts which aren't. But to make it easy so that Theodore doesn't have to kind of go around and rely on everyone, it might be easy if you light a torch. If you don't have a torch, you've got plenty of bones, get some cloth. Yep. Speaking of bones, Galen's got bad can also. can I search the um? I I, I, I would like to search the bones because you know Cause, there's yeah. bones there. Yeah, there's all kinds of animal bones. So basically, before um, just to kind of give you some information from the book, before this wall had collapsed and filled in that hole, this this particular room that you were in above that was the harpy's nest. So that was their feeding room. And what they do is when they finish with the bones, they chuck them down a hole. Oh. And that's it. So that's like why a, there's, a, there's like, a pile of bones in this chamber. It's, is, are you going to light a torch? I've yes. got the, I've the, got my yeah, lantern. He has, he has the yeah. lantern. So as you light the lantern, um, you can, you can make it full lantern, can't you? It's not just. It's a bullseye lantern, so it's, it's adjustable. Directional. It's it's yeah. literally directional and shoots yeah. out a beam that makes you a well lit for 10, 10 feet, okay, for, that's 30 right. feet, uh, 30 so feet, I think it actually is. You can see the size of this particular room, and I'll swap it over so the audience can see. But this is just one of the, a room, and then, um, oh, sorry, I'm trying to do two things at once. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. It's, sorry, just to... Yep. Clarify it's it's a bright light for sixty feet, yeah, and dim light for an additional sixty. Wow. Mm. Okay, that's fine. Ah, yeah, we're good. So you're in you're in this room here. Now all of this is just collapsed. Okay, all of this here is all just collapsed wall. That's so. Don't worry that it hasn't got a solid brick. Where you're standing on, you three, this is all piles of bones beneath you, and you realise as you're passing the the light around, there is a door here. Now, not, we're near to the end of the episode, so I'm not going to worry about covering this over. But there is a door. Okay, I'll, so I'll go over to the... Is it is it just, like, shut? Yeah, it's just... It's kind of almost slightly barricade blocked by the bones. You're going to have to shovel some of the bones out the way to get this door open. Is okay, there anything in mixed into the, in the bones? Any treasure? No, nothing's been... Uh, there's no kind of... Uh, fingers with uh, gold rings or anything like that. Um, everything has been picked clean. Uh, if, it, if the uh, harpies didn't eat it, the rats probably did. I'll, okay, well, I'll, I'll help Smigs by moving yeah. the bones away from the door so he can take a better look. Clawing away the bones, trying to open the door. Do you, you spend a few minutes doing that and you get to the door. The door is uh, wooden with metal braces across it. It has warped over time with damp, rain, everything else has gotten to it. So it's um, it's wedged in place, but you're going to need a strength check to kind of get it open. Hey, uh, Wogan, can you help, you, uh, help me here a little bit? My uh, strength really is uh, more of a dump stat for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give it a try. <laughs> I'll, I'll put one foot on the wall next to the door. I'll grab the handle in both hands and I'll attempt to, to pull it open. So you've got this little uh, fire-bearded dwarf, one foot on the wall. <sighs> Go for it. That is a dirty 20. Rolled 17 on the dice. Well done. Uh, yeah, I mean, you start to pull the door, it starts to give, and then the hinges just rip off. So you look really cool. <laughs> Ripping a door off its hinges. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Much cooler than when I jumped into the hole. Yes. Unfortunately, it was pitch black and nobody could see. <laughs> no one saw. I didn't see a thing. I, I had my face buried in the dirt. Yeah. Nowhere near as cool as my Oompa Loompa roll, though. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so behind the door, you see a small kind of uh, a small chamber, just a small space, and then a secondary door. This one is in much better condition than the rotten one you've just pulled off the hinges, though. It is just does a wooden it, door with metal does braces. Does it open? I'll, I'll step forwards. Yep. And so you're taking my, in my mind, that one opens into the room because you wouldn't have them both opening in the same direction. So yeah. if this one <laughs> opened into our room, that one opens into the other room. So I'm yep. going to attempt to push it open. And did you see what Maverick just put into chat? No. <laughs> he said this must be a mimic. And I was like, yeah. oh, crap. <laughs> no, 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 no. And we'll see you next episode. Yeah, in, in episode <laughs> one, we've got, we've got the triumph room. We've got the, the harpies, the owl bears, and the mimics. Yeah. It's yeah. got to be. <laughs> Level it's one. a mimic we're the, the player in me is screaming. I'm, I'm looking at the floor in the next room and it's covered in like runes and symbols and stuff like that. It's like, so, right, let's sit here and work out what this possible oh, no, 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 no. So, ignore what you see here. I have a picture. Okay. okay. So, what you, this room has like bows and swords and stuff on the floor. Ignore all of that. That's just, it's literally just like a, a nice looking tile. Right. Okay. So, we'll, I'll, I'll, when you open a door, I tell you what's in there. Okay. I, I, I will. I will step forwards. I will open the door. Ignore the treasure room. <laughs> as, as, the, <laughs> as, as the door opens, you. There we go. Um, right. Okay. So you open the door. It, it, there is a little bit of pressure behind it, but you manage to wiggle the, the door open. Um, there is rubble on the other side of the door. That's what was kind of keeping it closed. But what you see on the other side, and I will send. Uh, all the players a new picture that is coming across now for the audience I will I'm gonna switch you back to the other screen make a mental note audience that's the layout it's a very simple layout I'm just gonna switch everything around here we go and then I will show you oh that's very cool wow that's really that nice is what is in that's the room very nice let me oh, don't need that one let's go with that here we go bum, bum, bum. okay so there's windows uh, right so ignore the window <laughs> okay so <laughs> there is a so steve winter who's the writer of the book um he's done he's done various interviews and stuff and he's he said uh, during the interview he's like oh yeah this artwork is amazing he goes oh i just i just realized there's a window there shouldn't be a window there. So there we go. Um, this It happens sometimes. But hey, so this ground level chamber still reeks of uh, animal waste. It's all coming through from the, other, from the other, other room. Animal waste, sweat, and rotten meat. Bones and feathers lie strewn across the floor. However, along on the north side of the chamber, a wide stone staircase descends into the earth. So my players looking there, they can see that I'm pointing to uh, a staircase. Uh, audience, you don't need to see that. They're just looking at the picture. That staircase is in between those carvings, okay? Descending to the earth. The wall above the stairs is carved into a faux archway decorated with those interwoven knots, those axes, uh, those fierce looking owl bears on either side, all in a characteristic dwarven style. Now, there is a stout door stands uh, closed in the west wall. It was clearly made for defense. So that's at the bottom of the, basically it's at the bottom of the stairs and it's fortified with steel bands, uh, steel bands and large nail heads. Now the staircase that's in the room that you can see on the map, that is completely destroyed with rubble. Okay? It doesn't go anywhere, it's, it's just all blocked off. So the only way is down in between and you can see light there is light shining up from below probably it, well, it is it's torch light but you've got this beautiful kind of entryway who's going to go in first but um, before we do um we may want to like throw a rope or something back upstairs so we can get out later that, right? that's a really good point how far was the drop <laughs> <laughs> um, it, uh, what did I say? It's only about sort of ten foot into the room because oh. you hit the pile of bones. So you're okay, but yeah, you're quite right. If there's, you don't really have a ladder or a rope to get back out. I have a rope. Okay. In my inventory, you've still got to get rope it. Too. 
Yeah, we got to get it oh, somewhere no. upstairs <laughs> and and you anchor. Have a so book. yeah, I do. Throw it up. Oh, there you go. So you're going to oh. tie off part of the rope. I have to the grappling hook. Yes, book. I have a, the adventurous set. So cool. yes, nice. So why don't we do that before we venture forth? Hmm? Yeah. Well, we can always do that like when we come back here to get out so because we might find a use for the grappling hook later on all right um but could we take a short rest here very quickly um well you've got an open doorway so there is light coming through okay all right well we i say we enter (laughs) so the the Sorry, the door at the bottom of the staircase was open. Yes. Mm. Oh, okay. I thought it was closed. I, I say we enter. Okay. Agreed. Well, when we, when we were speaking to Conrad, he mentioned an arch. An arch that when you approached at midnight, you could hear the magic of the ley lines passing through. And if you pass through the archway at midnight, you could be transported to the Fae. This is sort of carved into an arch. You think this is the same thing he was talking about? Is there magic emanating around here, Galen? Uh, I could use my spell book, but it'll take some short time to cast if you want to wait. Um, I, I will give a, a house rule because obviously uh, with Band of Badgers, we don't worry about if it says, oh, it's, you know, it takes 10 minutes to cast. You mm-hmm. can just cast it. You're kind of hanging around. You can, you know, inspect the statues. And while they're doing that, you can inspect it for magic. Okay. So if you're doing detect so magic, that kind of detect thing. Detect magic, yeah. You just go, bing. Okay. It then is not I will... magical. I would have guessed not, but it was better safe. Yep. Okay. Oh, hang on here. If we go, if we go through this door... Where do we go? How is this door different from the Fey door? You walk through a door, and then when you walk through the door, you're on the other side of the door. <laughs> this is all very deep. <laughs> I like Ma- Maverick's got the right idea in, in chat. <laughs> the bigger, you just fought an owlbear and a harpy. Like, There's a door, and it's open. <laughs> It's what do we do? <laughs> <laughs> if we walk through it, where do we go? <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I say we go through. <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go down the stairs and go through the door. Okay, so Oregon, and it's it's, it's, it's dwarven. I'm following I think, Oregon. I think you should go first. It's, it is dwarven. So and you, I'll follow Oregon. You go down. Um, you go down the, the flight of stairs, and you can you pass through the doorway and the archway, um, and you come. And, and, and as I do, to, yeah. As I do, I shall say. For cause. For the beer, what? <laughs> <laughs> I've got. I've got buds. I've only got. Um... It's, it's the only god worthy of a, of a dwarven <laughs> paladin's um, worship. Is is the god named after a beer? Cause. Cause. Nice. Okay. <laughs> for so course. It, you, it, so for the for the audience, it, it is uh, we're we're playing Cobalt Press. We're not playing D and D. This isn't Forgotten Realms. This is Midgard, the world of Midgard. Okay. So Cause is one of the the, the gods, gods of the crossroads. Crossroads, I believe. God of light and justice. A good guy. So, you pass, you see Oregon walk down the stairs, bravely walking down the stairs, and kind of turns a corner and disappears. What's everyone else doing? Following. I'm, uh, I'm following. Behind Galen, yeah. I've just seen that Drew has joined us in the live chat. Hi, Drew. <laughs> we, just had, we just had 10 minutes on the door. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, great. One of those door tricks. <laughs> so you, you see Oregon disappear at the bottom of the stairs, and he turns a corner and disappears. Who's I'm following right behind him. Okay. Yeah, me. Gaining disappears. Gaining's in second. 
Smig's third. Theodore. 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 Okay, I'll take up the rear then. And I'll, I'll go in kind of apprehensive, sort of looking at the door as I'm kind of crossing yeah. the threshold there. Is it Theo last or Smig's last? I'll go last. Sure. Okay. Smig's. Yeah, I'm last. I'm a bit excited about what's on the other side of the door. Yeah, I'm ready to go in. <laughs> okay, so as we turn the corner, um, you appear into uh, another... Sorry, I won't I won't say you appear. It's like you vanish and reappear somewhere. Forget all that. Right, so yeah. you enter a chamber. Now, this chamber contains uh, a table and a chair, and it's positioned as a desk, as if it's kind of for... Uh, conducting interviews or inspecting visitors resting on the table is a battered shield a blood streaked and rusted sword and a half dozen candle uh, candle stubs like you know burnt down candle stubs a door to your left is slightly ajar a much heavier door with a small barred one of those small barred windows stands closed in the north wall and Oregon, you entered the, the the room first. What would you wish to do? I'll head over to the table uh, and take a look at the shield. See if there's any uh, clad markings or <clears throat> is it a dwarven design or is it a human shield? No, it looks like a, a low-cost human shield. Okay. So this is probably equipment that's been left over by one of the previous um, adventuring parties. Yeah. How many candles are on the table? Let's say five. Um, I'll beckon the, the guys over um, I don't know if you want to have a search around on the table um, that, that sword's got blood on it dried probably from quite a while ago and uh, I assume the shield is uh, from one of the previous adventuring pies that somebody's left here maybe they tried to get out in a hurry uh, and then I'll wander over to the door that's ajar and see if I can peek through the crack and see what's beyond okay so as you walk towards the door, uh, the door that is ajar, uh, Smigs, you, again, your passive perception is so high, you pick up on another noise. And this isn't heavy breathing, but this is kind of a moaning noise. How far away does it seem... This is like coming from the door that Oregon is walking towards. Oregon! Hang on a second, I'm hearing some... I'm hearing some moaning. Not really, not really sure, but... <laughs> hearing, uh, hearing uh, some moaning. Uh, <laughs> what, what sort of moaning? You know, it's kind of like a... You know, it's kind of like a... Like a, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, kind of like a, like a uh, sort of a B movie zombie noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Uh. Should we should we check the other door then? Um. The the one the one with the, the grill. Yeah, I'll I'll check that door. Um, I also want to look for anything uh, suspicious, like a trap or anything on said door. And is that is that door is that door locked? Oregon? Yeah, that's. Yeah. Well, you're gonna have no, to. No, um, it's open. So the one that Oregon's open is is towards on the left is already open. The door oh, it's already open. North okay. is closed. Yeah, that's the <coughs> okay. one I'm checking. Yeah. So the one where the moaning was coming from, that that was the door that was ajar. I'll I'll stand there and and stand ready in case. Yeah, it's, it does it's, I mean, can you shut it? Is it possible to shut the door? So Oregon, as you get closer to the the door, there is, um, there is a strong smell of rot. Yeah. And blood. <laughs> I'm just I'll just stay where I am. Uh, keeping an eye on the door to make sure whatever's inside doesn't come out, but I'm, I'm worried about approaching it yeah. at the moment. Um, yeah. 
And no, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna take the bravery. I'm gonna step up to the door. I'm gonna look what's inside. I was just gonna go to the theater. Okay, are you sure you wanna? You're gonna? <clears throat> yeah. So, we're, 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 so Oregon, are we sure you're gonna go in? I was just gonna go to Theodore, but are you, no, you want to I'm, go I'm, in now? I'm, I'm gonna go the brave route. I mean, a dwarven nice. stronghold, and there is undead there, and I, I'd, I'd want to get rid of it. So I'm gonna step up to the door <laughs> and, and take a look at what's inside. <laughs> okay. You, you step up to the the door, and you appear inside. There is there's light in there, so you can clearly see what is in there. I'm gonna send you. I'm going to send everyone another picture and then I'm going to share it with the audience. Of a horde? <laughs> <laughs> so, let me uh, let me grab the next. Um, funny you should say that. <laughs> um, oh, nice. So here's that. And for the audience, this Ooh, is what yeah. they see. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Oh, dear so God. this <clears throat> oh. <laughs> 30 foot diameter chamber is a horrid sight especially to Oregon remember he's a paladin there are chains that drape from the ceiling each with a large meat hook at the end six of these chains have bodies hanging from them all in various stages of decay indicating that they've been dead for weeks to months the stench of death is thick in this chamber. The largest, nastiest looking hook hangs motionless above what appears to be a five foot hole in the floor that drops into blackness. Something is lashed to the hook. Now I'll just see if the, I'm not sure if the audience can see that. Yes, they can. Uh, lashed to the hook. They appear to be a pair of lacerated human hands that are gnawed off at the wrists. The chain extends for a pulley, you can see it going off to one side, attached to the ceiling and back down to a winch with hundreds of feet of chain spooled around it. So there is a, a, a mechanism in there to uh, lower and raise this chains specifically the chain that's in the middle to go through that hole and we're going to find out what happened <laughs> next week i was going to say oh he's going to be gosh. standing on the floor <laughs> <laughs> so we can leave it there guys wow well done nice wow yeah yeah i'm looking forward to next Ooh. week <laughs> Are you ready Dead for it? steps out of the now, shadows. So now we finally get into the dungeon proper. This is this is um, this is interesting. Fable forty two. Thank you for following the channel. Um, yeah. So uh, how do you like? This is our first session, first game of the new year. We're back into a brand new campaign, brand new hero badges with me. That was amazing. That yeah, was, that was good. That was a great session. That was a really good. Yeah, it was fun. It's cool. uh, and there's you know, much, always, much more to come. <laughs> always fun at level one, taking on all that different oh. stuff. That was pretty cool. Which reminds me, you're now all level two. Oh, oh yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Between this week and next session, you can level yourselves up. Um, level let's up keep down. talking. We're using WhatsApp. Let's keep talking as a team. Any kind of hints, information. That was great. So how you know using the bacon, I think, was absolutely fantastic. For the yeah, bacon, I'm going to give you an inspiration point because you never even saw that coming. That was fantastic. Uh, that was thank that you. Was, that was a good. Yeah. That was nice. Yeah. So you can use that next session now. Thank you very <laughs> much. You're going to throw us next yeah. week. So if we had an albear, you had an albear, harpies. harpies at first you nearly level. had a mimic. <laughs> you had, you had an yeah, level two. <laughs> Yeah, a hell of an episode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and bacon. So, uh, well yeah. done. See, that's the most important part is the bacon. <laughs> yeah. It all started with bacon. There we go. Yeah. It all started with bacon. Uh, thank you to everyone who's been with us live. Uh, thank you very much. Um, just to kind of shout out to my players, we're in the UK, Australia. Uh, two of them are from the States. Two different. We got one. What did we say? One, two, three, four different time zones. Yep. 
four, four time zones. Yeah. Four time across two days. <laughs> yeah. but, but I'm tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. True. He's all the way from Saturday morning over in Australia. So um, this is this is this is the the power of these games. This is what we love them so much. Bringing people together is what we want to do. So thank you very much for joining us. This will go up on YouTube over the weekend. Please do like and subscribe. Find us there if you like it. Tell your friends, your neighbours, your pets, alien abductees. <laughs> tell anyone. Just we need we need the sub subs. If you love us, love us. If you love us, love us too. No, we love you. We you love. I don't know. Just. It's whatever, okay? It's good. It's all good. <laughs> Love us more. <laughs> Love, <laughs> Love us more. <laughs> there we go. That's a nice one. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. We hope you stay around. This is going to be a short series. This is not 10 months. Uh, you know, this is something you can stay with and have some fun. Um, and check them out. Cold Press. Until next time, we will see you all again next week. Bye-bye.